Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and lovers of drones everywhere. Welcome to Thursday Night Live. Woo! Hey, it's Ashley. Me. Hey, Ashley, you got a new set back there. I decided to stop filming just my bed. <laughs> okay, moving up in the world. Added, look at this little guy. Look this at that. Make everybody happy. Oh, yeah, that's nice. I mean, huh. he's fake, but he's he's happy. Right. I date a lot of girls like that. Fake, but happy. <laughs> anyway, speaking of happy, I'm kind of not. Maybe you notice my face is a little red, and that happens after I scream and yell at Wirecast. As you can see, eh, there's a blank space up there, and that's because the chat's gone. But hopefully you can see it down there. Now, when this show posts later, it takes a while for it to process by YouTube, so the chat's not available right away. So I don't know what we're going to do. Maybe I'll just, I, there's not a lot I can do. Maybe I can just do this. And then and then we'll and, and then just raz it up a little bit. Ooh, Maybe we'll just have raz, raz the whole raz night. Tonight? Yeah, extra raz. I don't know. Anyway, ah. so uh, the show I'm going to keep it under nine hours tonight because I have to get up early and head to Washington D.C. to <gasps> protest the stinking FAA and their NPRM. Right, Ashley. Stick it to the man. And uh, our special guest tonight, uh, Matt Williamson. He's one of the organizers of the protest. Old Gravy Leg FPV. Nice guy. That's his name. The great, Gravy great leg. username. We're going to have him on. Um, also, going to speak with uh, William Leg. You may have seen him in the chat a few times. He always has a funny comment or three. And he is part of a program in the UK that uses drones to find lost doggies. <gasps> oh. Yeah, not cats. Screw the cats. But the doggies. Anyway, and... <laughs> Tonight, stick around because there will be a mystery guest. Oh, mystery oh, guest. Head your bets now. But first, it's our favorite sponsor. They keep the lights on, ladies and gentlemen. The Cadillac of processed meat. A pigeon. A jerky. Woo. You'll enjoy pigeon jerky. Pigeon, pigeon jerky, jerky. The Cadillac of processed meat. You'll enjoy pigeon jerky. Pigeon jerky. You'll give your family a treat. It's balanced nutrition to help them grow. Yeah. And it's full of fiber to make them go. Here we go. You'll enjoy Woo. pigeon jerky. Pigeon, pigeon jerky. jerky. The Cadillac of processed meat. Yeah. It even sounds good with Ashley singing along with the lag. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's that's all right. That's all right. So, all right. Does it ever just pop in your head every now and then? What? That song. Pigeon Jerky? Yeah, oh. sometimes I'll just be at Walmart or something. All of a sudden, I'm like, Pigeon Jerky. Yes. Yes, it does. Yeah. I wanted to make sure that was normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I believe uh, Ray Bob and his antics are going to return tonight. You remember <gasps> Ray, uh, our buddy uh, uh, Ray Bob? He recently had his 34th wedding anniversary. Uh, so we're going to welcome him back. I think I saw River Mersey in there as well. So welcome back. We got a lot of new people just test mm -hmm. checking out the, the stream. I appreciate you doing that. You picked a great night. It's all broken. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, speaking of broken, I have to mention someone else, um, two someone else's. One, uh, Greg Coonert, the guy that is from Australia, and he helps keep this running smoothly. Well, uh, he is at Roto Rooter having a colonoscopy. He's about to go in and uh, he's done the prep. If you're over 40, you should get a colonoscopy. I know it sounds funny, but it's very important. I think I can hear. Yes, he's about to go into surgery. <laughs> my advice don't live stream because I live streamed right after my colonoscopy this last time and I don't remember doing it. What did you talk about? Uh, you can search Ken Heron. Colonoscopy, and you can see. Oh, I'm yeah. ready. Yeah. I'm so ready. And and our buddy Rodney Bell. Um, Chris Hope told me that uh, Rodney Bell was having heart problems, and he had heart surgery today. Four bypasses. What? Yeah, that's that's more bypasses than the interstate. Uh, and <laughs> apparently he's doing okay, so our, our thoughts go out to him. Let's send him... Uh, happy vibes. Let's send Rodney Bell some happy vibes. And maybe a fake plant in a cheese basket. <laughs> oh my oh goodness! My 
Ray Bob's antics. He is back. Ray Bob with a $25 super chat. I think, is that our first super chat of the evening? It is, as far as I can see. Okay. Well, I am uh, on, going on a 12-hour drive, so that is great for gas money. True. Yes. Yes. And we need that gas money, don't we? <laughs> ah. <laughs> Let's head into the drone newsroom, shall we? Stop the music. It's time for news. Everything you'd ever want to know about drones in the dronosphere. <laughs> Jeff Sills in the newsroom. Hey, Jeff. Hi, sir. How you guys doing? Pretty Ashley. good. Hi, Jeff. Ashley, good to see you again. Love the Hi. new back. So it's fabulous. Before we get into the news, how is the job search going, sir? Have you found one yet? Uh, no, but I have a new affinity for the words we regret to inform you. Oh, no. <laughs> have you gotten a, bu a bunch of rejection letters? Bunch of rejection letters. Do you, do you have one handy? Can you share one? No, but I have one that uh, comes to mind that I, that I specifically want to, I guess, point out. Okay, hold on, hold uh, on. Hold on. Let me, get the, let me get the music for you. We need... Uh, uh, hey, hey, okay, hit, hit it. All right, so you spend... 40, 45 minutes on one of these sites getting all of the, the data in place for your resume. You get mm. all the fields filled out. You do all the questionnaires. Yeah. You do all the information. And once you fill it out, you hit the submit button. And, you know, you figure it'd probably take them a, you know, a couple of days to review it. And you might get a call back. Right. Uh, one particular company, the response came back within five minutes of me hitting the submit button saying that they reviewed my resume and wish to inform me that they regret to inform me and i'm like there's no way that you looked at that resume <laughs> wow so, yeah. i mean that's you know if you send out a bunch of resumes you're going to get a bunch of rejection letters that's just the math of it but it, it doesn't feel yeah. any better yeah i'm still waiting for the yes that's all right all well maybe we can you know what i'll give jeff uh, a certain percentage of the super chats tonight and and looks like we're getting a few more in gray bearded drone pilot oh my goodness i make my own pigeon jerky well that is a little concerning <laughs> we need to get the 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 ground penetrating radar out to his backyard and, and uh geeks vana with a five pounder let's pound it yeah with a super sticker stickers i like stickers yes i do yeah i know we're gonna get to the news in a minute uh, and River, River Mersey with a one pounder. Thank you so much, River. A little smiley face sticker there. And another one from Gray Bearded Drone Pilot with a 10 pounder. Thank you so much for the gas money. Oh, no, not for me. It's just for Jeff. All right. <laughs> now back to the newsroom. All right. So tonight's drone news uh, is brought to you by GPC Custom Drone Cases, providing you with the highest quality professional cases so your investment is always protected when it's not in the air. Custom cases are also available on request. Uh, designed for life. Be original, be blue. Use discount code TNL10 for a 10% discount on all purchases at goprofessionalcases.com. Link in the description. GPC Cases. Love you. Mean it. All right. So this morning, the DAC uh, or the Drone Advisory Committee for the FAA uh, had their meeting uh, and it included the FAA leaders as well as the drone experts as they discussed taskings and recommendations for uh, things going forward with the drone environment. And uh, <laughs> it's about as exciting as watching paint dry, but I did record a little bit just so you could see what you were missing. They did talk about some important stuff. Here's a little bit of it. Um, DAC rec recommendation to auto renewal on the expiring waivers. Expiring waivers should auto renew unless there is a compliance issue or change in the regulation. If not able to auto renew, only require entry of renewed dates, not re-entry of the entire waiver um, process. We can't auto auto renew. Woo, that's boring, huh? I mean, uh, we'll put a link in the description uh, if you want to check out that stuff. There's a uh... Here, here, I have another cut. Here, here's what the people look like. They're all dressed up in suits. The other thing I want to acknowledge is that we realize there are some complex operations people want to do that currently they're trying to do under 107. And um, that makes it somewhat difficult to get those complex operations approved under 107. We see some of those complex operations approved in 135s 
and that was a bit easier path, but that might be too much for others. So we're, we're currently under the IPP looking at, is there a middle ground and can we codify that so that applicants can understand prior to the availability to work to a rule, you know, how could we approach um, a waiver or exemption to another part that would be beyond 107, but maybe not all the way to a 135. Jeff, you all right, buddy? Mm. Jeff, Jeff, no. Jeff, wake up. Yeah. Time to go to school. <laughs> Um, so <laughs> basically what he was talking about, to put it in layman's terms, is uh, not us, not the hobbyists, um, not even really the Part 107 holders, uh, but he was talking about the Bezos and the Amazons and uh, what's Brown going to do for you, all about the delivering of the drones and how you can't do that with Part 107 because you have to keep it in line of sight. You have to have a Part 135 for delivery. And uh, to explain a little bit more about that, here is our buddy, Jason Shepard from RemotePilot101.com. Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of RemotePilot101.com, bringing you another really exciting, just very cool update. So if you've taken our Part 107 study course, you may remember that some of the basic regulations we covered are about attaching external loads to a drone for compensation. The FAA's rules for Part 107 pilots say that you can carry an external load if it is securely attached and does not adversely affect the flight characteristics and controllability of the aircraft. You may transport property for compensation or hire within state boundaries, provided the drone include, including the attached systems, payload, and cargo weighs less than 55 pounds total. And one of those main rules is that you have visual contact with the unmanned aircraft, either as a remote pilot or as a designated visual observer must maintain visual contact at all times. The acronym we commonly use is VLOS. Most of us have heard the stories of companies like Amazon talking about delivering packages by drone. The delivery of the packages puts the flight operations into a different category of FAA certification other than Part 107. The different level of certification is found in Part 135, actually, of the FAA's Code of Federal Regulations. So according to the FAA, Part 135 certification is the only path for small drones to carry property of, for compensation beyond visual line of sight. Yeah, and uh, you know, uh, Ashley, who the first, uh, the, the company was that got the first uh, ability to legally fly uh, packages? Uh, Ashley? United States Postal Services. Oh, no, 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 no. Mm. UPS. Yep. I yep. was so close. Yep, yep. Uh, their first delivery was uh, supplies to a hospital. So Nice. Yeah. Now, the other thing to take from, from the DAC meeting is that they also identify that there's a lot of deficiencies with the drone zone website and that they know that it needs to be modified to be able to uh, help pick up with a lot of the automated waiver renewals and automated waiver submissions that they expect to see start coming into the system. Um, and of course, 107 pilots do have waivers, but they were using waivers before we had Lance. So a lot of those old waivers that are out there for people to be able to fly in congested areas, those waivers are going to come up for renewal soon, and they want to try to streamline that process because right now to renew one of those things is almost as bad as trying to get it in the first place. Right, right. So, and, and, and I was watching this thing live earlier today. I don't know how many people, other people were watching the thing live, but I was able to comment. And, 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 and here's, here, I, here's my comment. Um, our hashtag is hashtag DAC. Also, let me spin it. And if you wish to tag us, it's at FAA Drone Zone. Go. Here comes my comment. And for those of you at the table, just a couple of words about the microphones. As a reminder, um, the mics are cold until you press what will the Ken button write? on the lower right. There'll be a red light that will indicate that the microphone is hot. <laughs> the fourth microphone will shut off. Yeah. Hashtag fa. You know, FAA headquarters is what it is. Uh, right. th that's what I was hashtagging. F-A-A-H-Q. Or as we lovingly say, fa Q. <laughs> <laughs> and right now I happen to have T-shirts available. Yeah. <laughs> Get your FAA Headquarters t-shirts. Let them know how you feel about the new NPRM. Let everybody at the FAA know. Fuck you! <laughs> Available at Teespring. 
All right. <laughs> All right. So next in the news, the United States Navy has successfully installed its first optical dazzling interdictor called Odin, which is a laser weapon system that is going to be placed that is a place been placed aboard one of its warships. Lasers! <laughs> During dry dock operations, the Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyer USS Dewey, uh, which is DDG-105, received the first of these standalone laser systems designed specifically to take out unmanned aerial systems. And what's it called? An inter-what? Optical dazzling interdictor. An inter-water? <laughs> I'm sorry, oh, I didn't hear for sure. Inter, an inter water? <laughs> hey, John Scott, thanks so much. Ten dollar super chat, five dollars for the FAA HQ, and five dollars for Jeff. You got it, man. Thank you very much. All right. So <laughs> next we have some footage. Uh, there was a train derailment in a place called Wallen, uh, Victoria, which is in Victoria. Uh, I think this is in New Zealand, and mm. the transport ta transportation uh, service there got some amazing drone footage of the aftermath of this particular derailment. Wow, look at that. It's crazy. Was anybody hurt? I mean, it doesn't look that terrible. I mean, it looks inconvenient. Don't have any information about any, any people that were, uh, like, passengers injured, but the driver and the pilot of the, the train were killed in the accident. Oh, no. And this was north of Melbourne. Oh, well, that's a shame. In New South Wales. Mm. That's insane. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, uh, you know, you can't really tell some of the times the, the damage until you see it from the air. Right. All right, so next we have a drone company that is doing food delivery, but they want to do food delivery in three minutes. Three minutes, you what? say? So yeah. Basically, you order your food with your existing food platform, whatever app that is. Um, the very first time you register your location, your delivery location, we give you an overhead view. You drop a pin where you want the food delivered. And then when you order, instead of providing your address, we now have your location. As you can see, the aircraft there takes off from the restaurant. It travels at about 60 miles an hour straight to your house. It hovers overhead about 80 meters and you accept delivery. And there you can see the box being lowered down out of the aircraft on a biodegradable linen thread straight into your hands or to the ground. Where is this technology being used so far? Where are you guys testing it out? Yeah, so we're actually, we've been in testing for quite a few months now here in Europe. Um, we actually launch in the next few weeks in Dublin, in the south of Dublin in Ireland. And it's a great test market for us because the weather, for those that don't know, is awful here. It's one of the windiest parts of Europe. And so we can fly in 50 kilometer an hour winds, side winds and, and heavy rain. So uh, we we'll go live in Europe first and we'll be moving into the United States in the middle of this year. How do you go about getting regulatory clearance to fly those delivery drones? Yeah, so we're regulated by aviation regulators and that's why we're in Europe first. In, in Europe, the, the processes and the framework are, have, are, are ahead of where the United States is today, although the, the US is catching up. So. You know, it's, it's pretty straightforward actually to, to go through this. You're licensed by aviation regulators and their remit is to guarantee that you're safe. And, and that's where we are now. We've proven that. So we'll be licensed and ready to go, uh, as I said, next month. And um, to make that happen in the United States, a little bit more difficult. Things are more complicated there and moving a little bit more slowly. But there are some great advances being made. And we, we do anticipate that you know, at least fully commercially 2021 will be the year where, you know, everyone in the States can expect to see drone delivery becoming pervasive. So nothing could possibly go wrong with that system at all, right? Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> it's no. flawless, <laughs> especially if, like, say you have uh, a teenager in your house and, and uh, they run out to, to get the food. And for one reason or the other, I can't explain teenagers, but... Uh, they grab that biodegradable linen string and uh, try to use the drone as a kite, maybe, or attach the dog to it, see if it'll fly away with it, or I, you, any number of things. No, nah, what could go wrong with that? No, it wouldn't work perfectly. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Bob Hockey, thank you, man, with, a, uh, I think, a Canadian $20, which might be a few more dollars than regular good old American dollars. Thank you. Nice. He said, while the wife is looking the other way. All right, don't say anything. Yeah, don't. Hope you have separate bank accounts. What is this? 
<laughs> Thank you very much, Bob. Much appreciated. All right. So next in the news, we have uh, the, the coronavirus outbreak, obviously, has been uh, all over the place. And, and we see more and more news coming out. We've seen China release videos of all these things where they're using drones and robots mm -hmm. and all sorts of funky tools to try to be able to help people but combat this thing. But to get an idea of the impact of something like this, you know, you start seeing videos of cities where normally there would be millions of people walking around, but the streets are empty. Mm. Some new aerial drone footage recently came out of the Shanghai Disneyland. And this place was shut down because of the of the outbreak. Oh man. Oh. Oh. It's beautiful, but there's nobody there. Yeah. Oh. Oh. This place. Oh no! Oh! Good God! What's oh. happening? Oh! It's what worse than we thought. Oh my God! Somebody get over there and help those people. There's already zombies. It's worse than we thought, Jeff. Look at Jeff. <laughs> Don't mess with my news. This is my news. Don't mess with it. This is what happens when you work with somebody who watches too much of The Walking Dead. <laughs> All right. So next we have drone footage from uh, Tennessee. This is uh, in regards to some landslides that happened because of uh, heavy rain. Somebody got us some amazing footage uh, of this that was taken, by, I think, by the local fire department. Wow. Yeah, Wait, it's been pretty I bad know here. I that is. You do? I do know where that is. Blake actually covered that in a in a in a story. Yeah. For, for those Last who don't week, know, uh, Ashley's husband is TV's Blake Stevens. Oh yeah, I guess I should have said that. Yeah. We have gotten rain, no joke, for probably the past month and a half. Um, we've only had maybe three sunshiny days. Sorry to hack your news, Jeff, but no problem. The the amount of rain on in East Tennessee, middle and East Tennessee has been ridiculous. And I mean, there have been landslides taking out houses, businesses, all that jazz. It's really, really bad up in uh, Gatlinburg and farther into the mountains. And so, I mean, like you just saw, but it's been crazy over here. Yeah, it's, it's really bad. In fact, um, viewer Bill Holloman sent in a video that I'll share right now. In fact, uh, the Tennessee River was at 18 feet above flood stage. Yeah. And he shot what? some some video. Yeah, there's... There's a restaurant that gets flooded sometimes, and uh, he, here he sent that in. We had some footage of this before on the show. It's called Haggy's Catfish Hotel. It's right on the riverbanks near Savannah, Tennessee. Last year, he says the water got into the restaurant, but this year the river crested about five feet lower, so the restaurant was spared. I mean, just barely, as you can see there. Yeah, but the parking lot's underwater. Yeah, see the picture there? That's how bad it was before. Wow. Look how bad it is. Good drone footage, though, Bill. Mm -hmm. And he happened to get this barge. Nice. Now, Ashley, you've been flying your Mini, right? Okay, and we're going to get some footage uh, from you and see it later in the show? <gasps> yeah, I sent it to you. Um, listen, y'all can't roast me in the comments. No, no, we're not. It's, it's nothing but a constructive criticism. Okay, because I was very nervous, and it was my first solo f fly, but, like, I, I learned how orbits happen. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do one because I started to get a little <laughs> confused, but... I figured out how we'll they talk happen. we'll talk about it later. We we yeah, got to okay, quit go blowing up Jeff's news cuz we have a lot of it. Sorry Jeff. Back to you I, in the I'm newsroom. Still waiting, I'm still waiting to see the footage from her drone. I'm looking forward to yeah, seeing it. Yeah, yeah, we'll see that. All right, so next we have Black Swift Technologies, which is, uh, I guess, an engineering firm based out of Boulder, Colorado. They have uh, released the back Black Swift E2 UAS. This is an American-made advanced unmanned aerial system and this particular system is, uh, I guess, a unique design. Uh, it leverages on advanced computer vision and machine learning, so it's an intelligent drone that can, you know, kind of fly on its own. Uh, but it does inspections. Uh, it has a lot of uh, abilities for autonomous flight, um, and also it has what they call, a, I guess, a quick change battery pack. 
um, hmm. to be able to to work itself, and also as a quick payload change to be able to change stuff in the in the payload bay really really quickly. Ashley is smirking for some reason. <laughs> I like to keep up with the chat, and somebody said I look like I was holding in a fart. Oh! <laughs> well, if you know Ashley at all, you know that she doesn't hold those in. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Sorry, that's all I was smirking. Yeah. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Jeff, buddy. Now, back to the best drone news on the planet. <sighs> Professionalism out the window. Okay. <laughs> Next, we have... Uh, <laughs> Next, we have drone footage that shows the Northern Metals fire burning at night. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this this is... How did this happen? Uh, it was a fire at uh, a place called oh. Becker, Minnesota. Uh, Northern Metals is the name of the company, and they have uh, an area in the back where they, I guess, store or have uh, metals that are set... Uh, you know, for storage, and it caught fire. And so they got this drone footage from the fire department taken at night of these metals burning. And it's just amazing footage uh, because of just the, the colors and everything else that you get that's unique to, I guess, a, a fire of this type. I mean, if you're going to have a fire, at least it has to be pretty. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. It's terrifying and sad and everything. But if it can be pretty, well, then. <laughs> It's still on. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, TN Rocky Raccoon with a $5 super chat. A little help. Uh, a little to help out our local drone news reporter. There you go, Jeff. If you just joined us, um, Jeff is still looking for work. <laughs> this isn't his job. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to pay him in order for it to be a job. Uh, <laughs> no, but a portion of the super chats will go to Jeff tonight because... Uh, you know, ramen, it just gets boring after a while, right, Jeff? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, Pat's... <laughs> Pat's S? <laughs> Are you, is that a tongue twister? Pat's S? <laughs> That's supposed to be something else, I think. Uh, with a Canadian $5.49, thank you. Hey, Ken, what is this animal? Love you guys. It's, see, I, it's... My my old eyes. I can't. Uh, uh, Jeff, do you? I know Ashley can't see it. They I do can't see it, Jeff. I don't have my bifocals on. on purpose. Let I me see it. if I. There's always I one person in the chat. It's a bird. Glide. Is it? It's it's a it's, it's a, a bird. Oh. oh and everybody's heard about the bird. Anyways, back to news, Jeff. No, Walter Cronkite never had to deal with this kind of crap. <laughs> <laughs> Are you comparing right. yourself to Walter Cronkite? At this point, well, yeah. Okay. So Whoa. apparently you're going to be going to Washington uh, in February 29th, and apparently a whole lot of other people are going to be going to Washington on February 29th because the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force is going to have a drone race. This is going to be an FPV drone race. It's going to start at 9, p 9 a.m., and it's going to be a series of two-minute heats with four drones each that will go from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. But here's the beautiful part. They're going to race the drones through the airplanes in the museum. Say what? Yo. They are going to race the drones through the airplanes. They have a course set up that, I kid you not, is going to take the, the, the drones past a C-124, uh, a UH-198, a B-45C, an F-94A, a T-6, an F-82, and a MiG-15. Wow. So, and it's the start to finish thing that's going to race under the wings and around the aircraft. And it's just, that's going to be really cool. I hope they got some footage. Yeah. A Ashley, do that incredulous cartoon shake your head thing. <laughs> <laughs> and they're flying these things, right? It's going to be mini drones? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Flying a little mini drone. Oh, 
Look at those little babies. Look at that precious little muffin. This, oh, he's like a little cyclops. Oh. Well, so if there's anybody near the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force, uh, uh, John, February 29th, go over there and race you some drones through some airplanes. Oh, my goodness. Tater Rogers with a $5 super chat. I was so broke, I went to the ATM machine the other day, and it printed me a coupon for ramen noodles, but here's a fiver on Tater. And by the way, <laughs> Tater sent in a picture a couple weeks ago. I haven't shared it yet. This is his son, and his son is named Tater Tot. Yeah, it is. That's his name. <laughs> Tater's son is named Tater Tot, and there he is holding pigeon jerky menu there with some Fabulous. eyeballs. Isn't that cute? Little Tater Tot. That's and and uh, Jason Doss, who is the father of my favorite operating system. <laughs> Ashley doesn't get it, but she's going to laugh anyway. $10 <laughs> super chat for Jeff. I laughed so hard last week over the <laughs> rectal flare. Sorry, man. Yeah. And now here is Jeff to explain what Doss was or is. What Doss is? Doss. It's an operating system. Oh, right? man. Like, Jeff, the IT guy, didn't even know that. No, no, she no, got no, you, no. man. I, I'm she got you, think, man. How in the world did we talk of, end up talking about some archaic system like DOS? <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, it's not enough to be on the show. You have to pay attention to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's like, what's that? Oh, it's a squirrel. Oh, and David Cassidy, my favorite partridge is back. For Walter. <laughs> That's for Walter. Speaking of Walter, I'm kind of thirsty. Go ahead, Jeff. All right. So next we have uh, Wing Aviation has jumped in on the whole drone remote ID thing. And what they're trying to, I guess, push is support for the ASTM standard for drone remote ID. And if you're not familiar with this, uh, this is a, something that was a collaboration two years ago between regulators, drone manufacturers, drone operators worldwide. Um, and it supports a diverse range of different types of drones. Uh, the ATSM standard outlines two methods of compliance. So broadcast information locally uh, with onboard equipment or share the information via uh, a, an available wide area network um, that you would you know, see through like an app or something to that effect. Um, but they're trying to, I guess, press the idea of using this ASTM as a standard uh, in lieu of some of the other things that have been brought to, to, to bear that would cost a lot of money. Mm. 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 Anyway, uh, you see who's in the, uh, do the super chat? I, I saw some super chats. Philip Akoshat. <laughs> That's how you pronounce his name. It's Philip true. Koshat, it's as if you went to the restroom using the buddy system. <laughs> I just popped in. I read it as pooped. I just popped in. Give me, give me a short recap I missed. Well, here's a short recap. We've been blowing up the news tonight, and uh, we have early RAS. Uh, we have <laughs> ERS, early RAS syndrome, going on because Wirecast... <laughs> Screwed the pooch once again! <laughs> <laughs> and won't give me my uh, uh, chat window that's up here usually. So, Oh, Chris Rollins! Hey, man! New daddy Chris Rollins with a $3 super chat. Thank you. I'll take that baby food right out of your mouth. Uh, a new dad? Yeah, he, yeah, he made a person. Well, he had help. Uh, praying <laughs> for that awesome job you're about to find, Jeff. Yes. Positive you, vibes. Sir towards uh, Jeff. Thank you very much, Chris. Good to see you in the chat. All right. So, Ken, as always, you love to get your FPV uh, footage, and so I think I found you something good today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is an FPV and longboards. Ooh! Now, I could do the FPV, probably, but the longboards, I'd probably break a hip. <laughs> These kids with the skateboards and their MySpace... No, no, my son got a longboard for Christmas. I've been out on that thing several times. They are fun to ride. Have you ridden a longboard, Jeff? Yes, absolutely. Have you ridden it down a hill like this? Not yet, but I want to. Does your son have health insurance? <laughs> okay. Well, when I get higher. <laughs> <laughs> this is great footage, though, man. 
Where's this at? Do we know? Uh, this is in Lisboten, Norway. Wow. wow. So pretty. Whoa. And that the street that they're going cool. down is called uh, the Les Leisvegen. Sure. Okay. Yep. Look at them. They go what? sideways to slow down around the, the corners. Wow, that's amazing. My skateboarding days are long gone. <laughs> but I can still climb a tree. Can you, though? Yeah. If you're over 50, let me know in the chat. Can you climb a tree still? When was the last time you climbed a tree? Because I climbed a tree about three years ago and got stuck in it. I could go up. <laughs> but like a cat, on, on I couldn't camera. come down. Oh, yeah, I got it on camera. Yeah. Yeah. Me and Dana. Oh, Dana was like, just come down. You're three feet off the ground. Hey, Zeb Meat. Zeb Meat. <laughs> Everyone comment on FAA 2019-1100 at regulations.gov. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. We only have like a couple days left to, to comment on that thing. And it does matter. Yeah. If you haven't commented, most definitely get your words in and let them know how you feel. Yes. All right. Uh, so Genesee County, there was a gentleman that w made a lot of news over the last year when he uh, we got uh, stopped by the park police, I guess. And uh, they confiscated his drones. Uh, they put him in handcuffs. They caught themselves on video with the drone still on, making rather snide comments. Um, and, of course, recently he won his court case, and they have to allow them to be able to fly drones in the parks now, and they, they can't be oppressive little people. But, uh, Ken, I believe you have something you wanted to share on this. Yes, he um, released a video that kind of sums all of this up, and, uh, boy, it really, it at first it made me mad, but at the end I was like, yes! Because I always defer to the FAA, you know, states and cities, they'll try to put up no drone signs in parks or try to bend whatever existing laws are there to try to get rid of drones for some reason. But uh, these guys, they fought it all the way. And here, I'm going to play this whole thing. It's about three and a half minutes long, but you've got to see this. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about what Ray Bob just did. Ray Bob! All right, here, watch this. Hello, thanks for watching. Here's a brief synopsis of the drone issue in Genesee County. Thanksgiving 2018, park rangers stop a Part 107 pilot and inform him drones are prohibited in nearly all 11,000 acres of Genesee County parks. Drone operator files up via email with park director indicating there does not appear to be any rules restricting unmanned aircraft. Park replies that Section 23 bans drones. Drone operator replied that the plain reading of the statute indicates that the prohibition only applies to manned airplanes. Mavic is not an airplane, nor is it a manned aircraft. Furthermore, <laughs> even if this local rule applied to drones, it would be unenforceable due to state preemption, which prohibits political subdivisions from regulating the use or operation of unmanned aircraft. Yeah. Park replied that they do not believe preemption applies to them, and Section 23 definitely applies to drones, and anyone caught operating an unmanned aircraft on park property will risk criminal prosecution. Confident the park lacks the authority to regulate drones, citizens continue to operate unmanned aircraft in the parks. On December 8th, park rangers arrest a 107 pilot, confiscate his items, and issue a bogus citation for a 90-day misdemeanor. Pilot retains highly competent counsel. <laughs> County enacts new ordinance in defiance of state law that explicitly regulates unmanned aircraft. Prosecutor fails to authorize the charge and the ticket is thrown out. After exhausting all other diplomatic avenues, drone pilots inform the county park of their intention to stage a fly-in, <laughs> where the county will have to decide how their police officers should act. You know what I'd do with him? Jail. I'd write him a ticket, take his ass to jail, and yep. release him down there. That's what I do. Yep. Because okay. there's rules to follow. Yep. A douche. Will they detain or arrest people without reasonable suspicion wow. of a crime? Or will they respect people's rights? After a flurry of emails leading up to the event, with a threat of jail time, plus a heavy police presence the day of the event, drone pilots decided to have a picnic instead of a fly-in. At this moment, 
they decide to form a nonprofit, Michigan Coalition of Drone Operators, and seek an injunction. Drone operators mostly didn't fly in the parks for many months until the conclusion of the court case, in which the judge granted the injunction forbidding Genesee County and the park system from enacting or enforcing any rules regarding unmanned aircraft. Upon hearing the news, drone operators flocked to the parks, which prompted this snippet of radio conversation between a park ranger and another employee. We lost that drone case, so you can't do anything with them. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll still talk to him. That's all you can do. They're, they, they, he's just rubbing it on our nose today because uh, rubbing our face in it that uh, the judge ruled against us. So they can, it's a free for all with drones right now. Well, maybe we can make it so that he don't want to come near us. The following day, wow. the park enacted an amendment to the county ordinances, which allowed drones at some parks, but still banned them at others, in defiance of the court order. They quickly enacted version 2, 3, and 4 of the amendment. All of this culminating in this flight right here. <laughs> That's what you get, coppers! That's what you get! <laughs> Special thanks to attorney Dean Greenblatt, as none of this would be possible without his expertise. Thanks for watching. Yeah! Wow. Yeah, Dean Greenblatt. Woo! How about that? Copyright strike. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great song. But, uh, so what was, what was the name of the, the guy again? There's a link uh, to his... Green uh, yeah, Greenblatt was the name of the lawyer that actually had won the case for him. Uh, the one thing that that I thought was, I guess, horribly bad about this was when they put it, they gave him the ticket on the existing rule, and then while the ticket was still, I guess, in the courts, they went and just kind of changed the rule to say, oh, unmanned drones as well. Right. Yeah. That's right. Just I, I just don't crazy. understand why all this trouble to begin with. What is it that people have that they're so they they're so hateful towards drones? They just want to be they just want to be right, I guess. Or is it like no? Is some woman is like they're taking pictures of me when I'm sunbathing? Oh goodness, I don't want them to see me. <laughs> they're they're spying on me in my window. <laughs> It's a stigma that is put on us by the media. It's a stigma that's put on us by all of these fake sightings. It's 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 just a stigma that we have as a community have to have the ability to shake off by showing that we are, you know, carefully conscientious, law abiding, and you know, rule following drone pilots that can can go out and fly a drone without harming or causing any stress to anybody. You yes. know, I mean. I fly my drone around my neighborhood every day and don't have any problems. I had one person question me on it. I invited them to come by the house. I showed them the drone. I even let them fly it. They felt more confident about the fact that there wasn't anything nefarious going on with it. And it just took five minutes out of my time. That's right. It's, it's, it's all about giving them yeah. a little bit of education. Um, but for those who uh, still hate drones, uh, and, and I, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh big thanks to geeks vana sean geeks vana i know he's watching over there in the uk and thanks to everybody watching in the uk right now because it's like one in the morning or so two in the morning or something crazy over there in, in london uh thanks to him for uh you you and him do a, a little show together and and uh he's all the time doing investigative reporting about drones and everything so thank you very yeah, much yeah he actually had interviews on his channel with the, the pilot that was involved in this. So if you want to get a chance to see some of that footage and, and some of the information directly from the guy's mouth, I highly recommend dropping by Geek Spana's uh, site and checking out the videos. Yes. Now, the news was extraordinarily long, long tonight. I don't know why you take so long doing the news, Jeff. I don't know. <laughs> if, if you're a little bit more professional, you could just breeze through it. I have no idea oh, why it's just taken honestly. so long. Really, Gosh. Jeff, we have to talk about this. But anyway, uh, very quickly, before we move on, uh, I want to thank Ray Bob's antics, man. Ray Bob is back. $50 super jet. Goodness. Loving TNL Ken, but still waiting for my YouTube channel tag on your videos. 
Oh, okay. I can do that for you, man. You bet, buddy. <laughs> uh, what, Jeff, what are you, what are you doing there? What, what you doing, pal? Nothing, sir. Just waiting for you know. My okay. Ah, uh, uh, here, here, here. I throw one. <laughs> throw, throw one of the candies. Ah, uh, you missed. And uh, River Mersey with a one pounder. Thank you, River. Much appreciated. Uh, Jeff, we have to get to our first guest here in just a minute. Uh, Matt Williamson, aka Oh Gravy Leg. <laughs> Gravy Leg. Oh Gravy Leg. Thank you, Jeff. You're welcome. The TNL News has been sponsored by Go Professional Cases, GPC, Design for Life, Be Original, Be Blue. Don't forget about the discount code and TNL10 for a 10% discount on all online purchases at GoProfessionalCases.com. Love you, GPC. Mean it. Thanks for stopping by. Now get out. Oh, that Jeff Sills. That guy. He's got the patience of Job, doesn't he? Honestly, you know, he's so chill and puts up with our shenanigans. He deserves all the good things in the world. He does. And uh, he will get a portion of the Super Chats tonight. Solid. And I'm not saying that because he can still hear me. Solid 2% of all the Super Chats will go to Jeff. <laughs> no. um, so, zero two. Yeah. Now, uh, thanks to Wirecast uh, blanking the bed once again, uh, there's, there's no... A chat window up here so thanks for your kids i hate you <laughs> uh so now here while i bring in our first guest here is ashley with a joke all right why do we tell actors to break a leg why because every play has a cast that's what you put a broken leg in is a cast you know right uh, yeah yeah, yeah. And now here is Ashley with a joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yesterday yeah. I saw a guy spill all of, of his Scrabble letters on the road. I asked him, what's the word on the street? Oh my God. Hey, thank God he's here, everybody. Hey. Thanks for having me. It's old Gravy Leg. Gravy Leg. So do you want me to call you Gravy or Matt or what do you want me to call you, man? Uh, call me whatever, man. Uh, gravy, Matt. Gravy. I'll, I'll, I'll call you gravy. It's all gravy. <laughs> so, um, gravy here slash Matt. Uh, welcome mm -hmm. to the show. Uh, by the way, this is this is Ashley. Ashley, Matt, Matt, Ashley. Hey, Ashley. Nice yeah. to finally meet you. Yeah. Hello, gravy. <laughs> Hello. Do you have any? <laughs> I thought it was the funniest thing when your camera glitched earlier because you were laughing so hard. <laughs> I've never had that happen with yeah. all the technical difficulties that I've had live streaming for three years. Never had that happen once. Yeah. Now you guys, you guys do. And we're going to talk to him about um, the the protest that uh, everybody is attending coming up on Saturday. But yes, uh, you invited me to your live stream. What's the name of the of the live stream that you you guys are on? Um, it's the the the, the S show. Um. Ah. I, I heard we're watching our mouths on here. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I'm applying uh, well, radio broadcasting rules. Hold on, I'll give okay. you. Okay, I'll give you something. So hold on. So it's called the show. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, it is definitely called that show. Uh, the UFDA crew, that beeping sound show. <laughs> yeah. You you give me an invite now. These are all FPV guys, which are, and they're so cool. They were all like vaping and kicking back. They all got really good facial hair and piercings and tattoos. I mean, I got a few, but <laughs> anyway, so uh, I'll play a little bit of that live stream. And there's a link in the description to uh, Gravy's stuff if you want to check it out. But this is from this is from yesterday. Ken Heron, welcome. Hello, am I on? Welcome, good hey. sir. Hey, hey Ken, you made it. How's it going? It's Ken Heron. It's like, hey, can you hear me? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I am not cool Ooh. enough for this room. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're one of us, man. Oh, yeah, you're totally. You're future yeah. us. Let's <laughs> <laughs> get all the old jokes out of the way. <laughs> future us. <laughs> That's so many people, so many boxes. Yeah, it was like Turbo Brady Bunch. 
honestly. Yeah, and the, and I thank you for for having me on there. I need to know uh, more uh, FPV people. Like, I guess I'm going to meet a lot of them this Saturday, aren't I? Yep, uh, it's Saturday, and then Sunday um, there's going to be um, something going on in Maryland, I believe. Um, I, I'll get the specifics and I'll get it over to you guys so you can get over there. Okay. Um, but either way, like there's like 80% chance I'll be down in DC. Like, um, yeah, I've had some health things going on, so I don't know if I can roll down there, but I mean, four in the morning on Saturday, if, if I can, then I'm just getting in my car and sitting for eight hours and heading right down. So, okay. Well, tell um, people a little bit about have carloads of people going down there too. Uh, they're already on the way, so they can't be here. Yeah, this is the uh, this is the web page. It's uh, mm -hmm. helpsaveourhobby dot com. Link in the description. Mm -hmm. And so, um, explain what it is that uh, we're all trying to do Saturday. Uh, I mean, clearly we're we're going to be letting the FAA know how we feel. Mm -hmm. Um. <clears throat> so what we're basically doing, the reason this all came up is, um, a lot of FPV pilots and a lot of um, just all hobby pilots, all hobby flight pilots. They're not just in this for the hobby. There's a lot of people that cross over, and that was never really taken into consideration either. How much that's this whole NPRM, even the Reauthorization Act of 18, 2018, there was no that wasn't really taken into account of how this could cripple so much. It could cripple innovation. It could cripple how kids are going to learn. Um, you know, it could cripple something that families do to stay together. Yeah. It could cripple like people. I mean, it, there, there are people that are, you know, recovering from abuse or drug abuse or PTSD. There's so many positive things that come from it. And this just seemed like, like it started off as a joke. The UFDA crew started making memes like going, Oh, the FAA is ruining the hobby and all this stuff. And then, like we're a tight knit, real tight knit group of people, and we we hang out every night in a Zoom chat, and it started getting real. And um, Enoch, who you met the other night, he just he just came up and he's like, "This is real. Like we got to do this." And then he just immediately started calling DC and going through the channels to get permits. Yeah, I mean, you guys, like th th fifteen. Yeah, this is this <laughs> is serious. I mean, we're not just going there. This is an organized event. Uh, there's going to be a yeah. stage and everything. You got permits. Um, yep. and, uh, yeah, like that, that's what really breaks my heart is, and I get emails from people all the time. Like, uh, I, I, I wanted to buy a drone can from young people. Uh, I wanted to buy a drone can, uh, should I now with all this, the changes coming up that people are hesitant mm -hmm. to get into it and, and, mm -hmm. um, kids are becoming disillusioned with it. I'm going to sell yeah. all my stuff now. That's, that breaks my heart, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and it's not even, like, just people looking to get in the FPV. It's, I mean, like, I'm one of the crossover pilots. I am I work in aerial production, and I fly with, you know, my kids, and I fly to, you know, just have a great time. I don't break any of the rules. I know what the airspace requirements are. I know, I, I follow all the rules. I'm not flying down Logan Airport in Boston down the runway at 120 miles an hour with my <laughs> FPV quad right. or with an Inspire 2 at a much, much slower speed. I'm yeah, not an I, idiot. But and you know, 99% of the people aren't. <laughs> they that's true and it's the 1%, it's the the idiots mm -hmm. that are are making all this stuff occur. Not to mention yep. uh the Jeff Bezos of the world. Do you really right. think in your opinion uh, that we're going to see drone delivery like i think maybe in big cities uh, but not cross country like i can't order something no. from amazon and expect it to be dropped off on my roof or whatever it's just seems so impractical to me i mean it's cool and i think it's part of the image that these delivery companies want to perpetuate is that we're on the cutting edge and we're going to be doing this and you know once uh amazon started talking about it then of course uh, UPS and FedEx needed, they all need to have a program, but do you think in reality yeah. that that will ever be, you know, the Jetsons? Oh, there's a dated reference. Like, it's an old cartoon. You I may mean, have seen it. <laughs> like in reality, yes, I think it, it, I, it'll happen, but I don't think that us as like, you know, people, I don't think we're ready for this. Cause if I, let's say I'm test harboring something in my front yard at 25 feet, my neighbor can come over and say, oh, what are you spying on me? 
just because it's a drone. Mm-hmm. Now imagine hundreds of these things. Right. Not and to th- mention that technology fails. So what have the first person that's even injured ruins all of the drone's safety record, which is impeccable over, uh, well, not just drones, but all of RC flight. Mm-hmm. It's been impeccable. Like you never really hear, maybe like a broken window or two. Right, uh, right. It's, it, it, it's None of this was needed. None of it, There's already checks and balances to keep people from breaking the law. And if you break the law, you pay the penalty. And, and you know, so, speaking of the 1% uh, of the people that will be careless with their flying RCs, uh, mm-hmm. it's a small segment of the public that vilifies the drones. But they're the mm-hmm. most vocal, and, and they're the ones that perpetuate this you're filming me. You're violating my uh, privacy. It's the most vocal people who are changing all this stuff. And now Ashley, as a as a newbie, uh, she just got her new uh, Mavic Mini a couple weeks ago from a really nice gray haired dude. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. And and you're uh, before she was on this show a couple months ago, she knew nothing, and she's learning. She wants to get her part one hundred seven. Right? I mean, you're very you're excited. I am excited, and it. Honestly, because everybody here knows I'm super new, uh, and I'm still very much learning even just the basics as a hobbyist, uh, this protest tomorrow and what laws that I hear you guys talking about on this show kind of stresses me out as somebody who is brand spanking new. I'm a baby droner, and I barely even know my rules and rights as a new person in the group in this world and community. It makes it, It's kind of stressful for me. What would you say to, sure to, to other new people that uh, are being stressed out yeah. by these rules? Yo, the high of flying the first time, worth it. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, the, And you're going to get that with every single time that you push yourself and go further. Um, like every time you do something new. Like I had a, a spotter the other day. I flew a mile and a half away. Wow, and that was my that was my farthest. I was flying FPV. My spotter had vis- I had a visual observer, completely legal, close golf course. I I knew how far I was going out. I knew, again, I I did it the right way. And there are so many pilots that do this, whether it is with a Mavic or an Inspire or a Sky, whatever. I went out, I came back, I landed, and I was shaking. It's like even though it was something just that little. I mean, you're not going to get that feeling of actually flying any other way aside from buying an airplane or becoming a bird. You can't be, and we can't become <laughs> birds. And most of us probably can't afford air, an airplane. Yeah, you're right. yeah. So that's the, that's the thing. And and Ashley is just now, uh, recently, because I told her to, has made the distinction between FPV and photography drones. Um, mm-hmm. Both are, offer the magic of flight, but uh, FPV really is more about piloting than uh anything else um mm-hmm. and uh one one of these days ashley we'll have you try that as well you know after my first solo flight i don't know how y'all fpv i don't know how y'all do it i was struggling <laughs> just going with this little mavic mini and then i started thinking about how y'all do twists and turns through these little windows and stuff i was like oh that i don't mm-mm, that's not real <laughs> but like like he was like Matt was saying you have to push yourself and learn new things yep. once you get that muscle memory and and you kind of have the orientation then you can try something new which is what I'm doing. I mean, I've been flying drones since uh, 2013 and just recently in the last year or so getting into uh, FPV. It's a whole different yep. thing and and that's the thing. Innovation and new technology offers that uh adrenaline rush that you get from trying something new and you put it very well there gravy and it's oh thank you (laughs) and the best thing is is it's if done correctly it is safe and and that is like listening today to the uh the dac thing where they were questioning uh dave messina Mm. who's actually like he's um somebody that you know we've been in talks with so that way we can go about things the right way and have good talking points so that way we're not just out there standing there um, he's a very knowledgeable guy. They they really do the whole FPVFC, uh, the Freedom Coalition. They they represented really well today, and it's almost like it went in one year and out the mm-hmm. other because there's it. Everything is moving so fast with not enough thought. There it, there really is no thought to this. No, it's, and, it's like and, a knee jerk. 
it's a knee jerk reaction. And Absolutely. It need to be done. And it and it seems like all of the solutions, the technological solutions are haphazard. Like, okay, we'll do this with a Wi Fi signal. We'll do this with a with a third party app. Uh, maybe we'll we'll uh, develop Lance a little bit more. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, all the all these solutions. And not to mention the fact that uh, the loudest voices are the richest voices. And mm -hmm. the hobbyists and the rest of us, we really I hate to I hate to say it. But we we don't matter as much in the, in the government's end game, right? But I mean, basically, they're they're hitting themselves in their own wallet because it is an upcoming industry. Still, it's still a fledgling. Like the FPV community, even people, um, there there are so many new companies that are offering um, like wings and foamies that you can build and like flight tests. They sell everything you can. You can buy everything. It's a one-stop shop. Yeah. But it's also affecting people like, um, like I'm sponsored by BQE. Um, they, they're a frame manufacturer. Under the NPRM, if this passes, he'll have to get certified. It's like, get certified for what? It's a piece of carbon. It, right. I mean, it, it can accept something that has an RID tag, but why does the, the entire airframe is going to have to be certified? Every single piece. So what does he do? Just stop? Yeah, and, and then and, there are bigger suppliers, you know, like Get FPV. They're down in Florida. They're going to take a huge hit because they're an American company. Um, you know, RMRC. Uh, it, it just it, there's so on many. On and on even and on. Like the local hobby shops. Yeah, it's and and it's a travesty. Yeah, everybody's going to have to reconfigure the way they do business, and the world kind of follows kind of what we do. The FAA dictates what the rest of the world will do uh, in, in, yeah. the, in aviation. And um, I imagine uh, that, you know, <laughs> there's a segment of the population, me included, that if it gets too bad, I just it won't follow the rules anymore. <laughs> I mean, there's yeah. going to be... You're gonna. Yeah, I mean, you're not gonna stop people. Civil disobedience is going to be the biggest thing that's going to happen from this because people right. aren't going to listen. That's true. And I imagine there's going to be... This is what I envision. Uh, that the legislation that's put into effect will have to be pulled back. There will there'll be such an uproar that uh, mm -hmm. it's just not, it won't be enforceable. They'll notice all the, the, the money is, is stopping. Uh, people are flying anyway. So they'll have to tailor, they'll, they'll, have, to, they'll have to restructure it. Oh, if, if yep. they do it the way they're talking about doing it now. Well, the funny thing, too, is they're making um, more legislation happen now. And even back when the uh, Reauthorization Act that just went through, they haven't even completed those tasks. And they were supposed to be done in some of them were 60, some were 90, some were 120 days. They haven't even done that yet. Like, well, there's no knowledge test. And this is years ago. So and now they're they're making new legislation they're not laws, it's legislation, because they don't have the ability to enact laws. They're just appointed to give legislation. Yeah. and, and So you're... that's like the weird gray area, and there's so many loopholes. It's like, like I'm, I was dealing with something, um, part thir uh, 333 is sunset. I need to get a 44807, which means I need to get my sportsman's license or higher to fly um, an aerial photography drone over 55 pounds. But there's, then they make you go through all these things. You have to register the thing as an aircraft. That's all well and fine. But they make you go through all these loopholes and all these circles. Why can't you just apply for it and say, here's my stuff. Here you go. And you're denied. Yeah, they, they, they keep not. moving the goalposts. Um, mm -hmm. And they change things around. I mean, you, you, do you have any DJI products? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you probably oh, remember yeah. there was uh, a little while there where uh, you had to take a test that DJI put out, like a little mini knowledge yeah. test. And it was such BS that it would mm -hmm. let you take the test over and over again until you got the answers right. So it. Right. It, but that's gone now. Um, yeah, yeah, it's Praise gone. God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was only four. It wasn't it only four questions. And it was like, can you fly in front of a moving aircraft? Right. Yes yeah. No? Something like, like that. Yeah. Can you deliver no cocaine idea. to a prison? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe not. 
But uh, how many drugs can you put on <laughs> Mavic One? It's the, it was the stupidest thing. But yeah. at least they did something. That's they did more than the FAA was supposed to do after the Reauthorization Act passed. Right, and uh, DJI. Well, DJI needs to do these things for optics. Mm -hmm. They need uh, everybody to know or think that they're cooperating in order to. I mean, it's it's pure business, pure business. DJI, if if they weren't required to do these things, they wouldn't do them. They would just keep selling their their things. But you know, mm -hmm. with the with the um, what what was it the entity in the United States that recently? Uh, got rid of all their DJI products. It was the Department of the Interior, I think it was. It was Homeland Security, I believe. Oh, yeah, okay. Or, the, yeah. Uh, no, DOD was Department of Defense. Oh, right, right, right. So, yeah. I mean, if we're in the Wild West right now. So, uh, we, I think we all agree that uh, it's, it's, it's pretty bad. What can we do? Will this protest be effective, do you think? I think it will be. Um, I, like I said, it's, Wednesday, it's Thursday night, not Wednesday night. Um, <laughs> I... We, you know, we've been up every night until three or four in the morning trying to get this stuff together so it is successful and make make everything happen that, that we plan, um, and not let the community down. I mean, we're we're a huge community, but I, I don't, I don't think it can go through. And I think if it does go through, like you said earlier, there's going to be so many pissed off people. They're going to realize that they really effed up, and it's that's not going to be a good thing because if nobody listens then what was the point of doing it to begin with and wasting all of our taxpayers' money? Zero. Yeah. Just like the amount of a threat that there really is. They, right. That was another thing that was... I'm sorry, I keep, like, just firing stuff <laughs> off. Yeah, go ahead. Um, the ARC assessment of 2017, the only people that agreed that there was nothing, there was no threat assessment whatever, uh, whatsoever, and I can, I can post the link to that in the chat if anybody wants to read it. DJI was the only company that said there was no risk at all. They disagreed. Everybody else agreed that there was a risk, but there was no proof. So why did it go further? It it just it it's there's it, no logic behind th this stuff. Huh. It's it's uh, and and a lot of the people that are in charge know nothing, mm -hmm. nothing about uh, how th uh, our hobby uh, works in 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 real world. Um, right now, of course, we could talk about this all night, but I do want to encourage people to uh, check out the website, helpsaveourhobby.com. If you have time, mm -hmm. head on out there. Uh, what's the itinerary going to be uh, if people want to head uh, out? If you scroll down, if you scroll down a little bit, yeah. um, you can see it there. But I got it right here. So Friday, um, we're going to be picketing Friday at noon, starting at noon. People are going to be setting up all night tonight. Um, to make this happen for tomorrow. Um, there's a crew of guys uh, from UFDA crew coming up from Mississippi. There's like six or seven guys. My buddy just rented a passenger van, Enoch, who you met the other night. Um, he's got a crew of guys going down there in one of those big uh, passenger vans, like the people carriers, and then he's got a box truck of all the stuff going down. He's actually in New York City right now, so if anybody needs a ride down there, if they can't get a ride down, he's got a couple of uh, seats. So uh, message me, and if you can't get in touch with me, um, Ken, if you don't mind, just give sure. me an email. Yeah, yeah. Because, um, I mean, the more, we need everybody to go down and just be nice and peaceful. And that's the thing is this is peaceful. There's, there's no flying. There's no drugs. There's no drinking. There's no nothing. It's not disorderly whatsoever. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's, no drugs? I'm out. <laughs> that's it. I'm, I'm like, that's. I mean, that's why I was going. <laughs> but uh -huh. you know, in all seriousness, uh, uh, one of my things. If you look at at uh, the airspace, you look at a sectional chart. It's like the worst airspace in the world to ever even think of flying. Yep. And uh, so I wanted to be the only one to get aerial footage, aerial footage mm -hmm. with a balloon. That was my idea. But then I talking to you guys, I found out you even need a permit for that, right? Stop. Yeah. Yeah. Enoch, Enoch called the next morning, the second <laughs> they opened, and he was on the phone for two hours fighting with the guy. And it was a hard no. Like Ooh. he really tried to make that happen. For oh, me, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But oh, I'll anytime. Man. I, I will I will um get you uh I'll make a video about the balloon on my channel later. But I really wanted to awesome. be the only one to get some aerial footage of this thing. In fact, I did some pre testing the other day by uh, bringing my big six-foot diameter balloon down to my local 
auto shop and using their air compressor to blow it up to see exactly how big it would be because helium's expensive. So uh, here's a little bit of that, how that went. <laughs> All right, so we're doing some balloon testing. I'm here at Andy's Auto Repair in Huntington, Tennessee. And uh, since helium is very expensive, Andy, that's Andy, he has agreed to uh, inflate this to see how freaking big it's going to be. <laughs> I, just you laughing because you know, like, yeah, give it another 10 minutes. Yeah, right? <laughs> That's about half. It'll go no twice way. That, I yeah. Think. yeah. This is one of those balloons that the the weirdos on the internet forgive me if you're one of the weirdos, but you can get inside this. Like you could crawl inside this if that's your thing. Thanks for letting me waste your compressor hair. World's biggest whooping cushion. Yeah, that's one of the balloons that you can get inside, and <laughs> <laughs> it was fun uh, blowing it up, but I've always wanted to try one of those. Yeah. Oh, to get inside yeah. a balloon. Yeah, that looks like it'd be, but I'm one of those weirdos, I guess. Okay, remember to have a safe uh, word. <laughs> <laughs> you weirdo. weirdo. Um, oh, man. So uh, all the links are, are in the description of this video. And bef before I let you go, uh, because we have another guest, believe it or not, uh, <laughs> William Legg, who is standing by. It's probably three in the morning now uh, in the UK. But before I let you go, I was uh, mm -hmm. watching after I left you guys on your stream. I watched you, and the funniest thing, I was just kind of half listening, and I heard this exchange, and I did a spit take. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's when you laugh and you have your mouth oh, full yeah. of something. So here, here, I'll just share it with you. It's hilarious. Watch this. I was interested you guys were talking about police enforcement and stuff, but being a pilot in New York City where it's, it's one of the toughest places in America to fly, I'd, I would like to think. Um, it's amazing how chill the police are, generally speaking, away, as long as you're not in Man Manhattan, like, generally speaking, it's pretty chill here. Like, we're flying inside, like, Bando parking garages, and they roll in and watch us and then just bounce. And, yeah. you know what I mean? And, like, technically we're, technically we're trespassing, you know, but, like, they don't give a, we're not doing anything, we're not drinking or... <laughs> You know, well, part partying. Exactly. So. They're expecting, oh, so junkies, they're going to go shoot up or something. It's like, oh, yeah, no. People are just doing their hobby. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> None of the cops in my town care. Like, generally, <laughs> most most cops could give a less. Right. They don't want to be bothered. I think like, they, even, but, I think they, they like, dig what it. What are you going to do? Yeah, no, exactly. You I mean, never I, know. I went into the police station. Here it comes. Because I heard that they could, there was a search and rescue. And they, they couldn't find somebody for like three days that had like dementia or something. And I offered, I'm like, hey, I can fly these trails faster than you can walk them. And I can see just as well as you can. And I don't have to move. If you want, tell me where to go and I'll fly and I'll come back. And they like before I got there, they wound up finding the guy. So I didn't wind up doing it. But they were just really thankful that, you know, me. And I mean, like me. Look at me just walking into the police station like saying hey i want to help like the way i look they'd probably be like how the f are you gonna help but you know it, you want to be an informant <laughs> yeah i know, I know. <laughs> did you already <laughs> said <laughs> did you already said he said you want to be an inf oh. you want to be an informant <laughs> that's, a, that's what i was laughing as she was laughing so hard you couldn't hear him say it but he goes you want to be an informant i was like Pff. at that point that's hilarious you guys are funny i i thank you very much for uh, inviting me in there, and I look forward to meeting you guys. Yeah, definitely. We look forward to meeting you too. We're not going to be hard to find. Uh, just look for the, like most of the UFDA crew. Uh, yeah, we're all going to have either yellow or orange hats on because they had to have people that were designated as in control of the protest. Right. So we'll have like the orange hats on. We'll have okay. lanyards, stuff like that. I'll, I'll just also, look. Anytime, uh, anytime I'll... you guys want to come back on the show, um, just uh, let me know. It's every Tuesday night at ten on the UFDA crew channel. You bet. And Ashley I'll just. Is well, uh, I'll if look you want to come on for a giant vape cloud out there at the protest. <laughs> nice. <laughs> right. Thanks, man, oh, for being on. I'll see you hey, Saturday. Thanks for having me. All right, see you, bud. Yeah. All right. See you guys. Bye. Well, he was a nice guy, wasn't he? He was a super nice guy. He's really funny. I like him. He's got a great voice too. He's got a better voice he than does. I do. It's old gravy leg.
Gravy leg. I should have asked leg. him where he came up with that. Yeah. Gravy leg. Now we got to knock out some super chats. Uh, oh, the, we do. Uh, Redbeard the pilot. Thank you so much. Five dollar super chat for those wow. already in to see. The uh, organizers are starting at noon tomorrow for an initial welcome picket. There will be when the bureaucrats are in. And also SSH drones. Hey man, it's Jeff. Ten dollar super chat. Jeff. Uh, from Atlanta, and I think uh, my screen just glitched. Thanks, Wirecast. Did I miss any more? Uh, we got Jake Sloan with a four ninety nine super chat that said, "Have a cup of coffee on me on your way to DC." And when awesome. you're there, please tell uh, Q as loud as you can for me, <laughs> which I could be there with you all. You bet. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's 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 the name of the game right there. The FAA headquarters. That's where it is. And if you need a mnemonic device, that's uh, to remember it. It's a uh, fa Q. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> make sure you put enough of a pause in there. Um, Metro Drones, $20 super chat. Happy TNL, everyone. Oh, and yeah, fa. Uh, Q. Q. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I don't want to miss any other super chats. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. And there's one from a uh, Jake Sloan. Have a cup of coffee on That's me. What I read. Uh, oh, you did? Okay, you got him. Jake, thanks, Jake. Send me more footage from Alaska. Uh, do we, we got get... some more that just rolled in. Yeah, what do we got? Southern Rail Fanning, $5 super chat. Hey! Oh, look, look at who it is. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, just entering the TNL Arena, it's John Dombra. Dombra. A John Dombra. John Dombra. A John Dombra. I, I, I have to imagine that the people that are watching this for the first time are going, there, that dude's having a stroke. What's going on with him? <laughs> John Darnborough in, in the United States, but in the UK, it's not bra. And, uh, and so that's a two pounder. This pound it. Thank you very much. Love you all. Love you too. And Paul uh, uh, Lossner. With a, a $2. Thank you so much. All right. Now, I know that uh, William Legg is standing by. He said he's a night owl. So it's 3 a.m. or something crazy there. We're going to get to you in a minute. I hate to put it off anymore. We're going to talk to him about the organization that he has using drones to find lost puppies. What? <gasps> you like the puppies, don't you? I like the puppies. Yeah. And, I look at the little puppy. And you love nature. Don't you love nature? I do love nature. I love being outside. Yeah. Let's, uh, now, do you, do you want to do Ashley's nature clip where somebody can win a prize? Or do you want to see a video about a big old boat? Let me see a big boat. Big old boat. Okay. This is from Zach. He says, hey, Ken, recently I made a trip to the Chesapeake Bay. I downloaded a boat tracker app and found wow. the Grand Duke. Uh, I've, I've had a few Grand Dukes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't. I couldn't, I couldn't. There's a, there's a morning show going on in my head, and there's the filter, my filter, I can't, I can't. In fact, I remember when I was married, honey, come check out this Grand Duke. <laughs> <laughs> and she would do the same. That was a lovely thing. No. Anyway. Uh, so anyway, I mean, that's an unfortunate name, but it's a cool app and I downloaded an app where you can see where the ships are. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, um, next time you have to take a ship, you can uh, take a drone and check out the Grand Duke. Anyway, so, uh, this is the big old boat from Zach. It's really cool. Check it out. <laughs> This is a vehicle carrier that was built in 2005. She sails under the flag of Panama. It looks top heavy, doesn't it? Holy ship. Yeah. But uh, her draft is 18.2 meters. Ashley, do you know what a ship's draft is? I have no idea. That's how low it sits in the water. The, oh. Yeah. The, so that means there's 18.2 meters below the surface of the water that we're not seeing. You know, like an iceberg. Uh, the overall length is 200 meters. It's 32 and a half meters wide. That's insane. Yep. 
And the name of the ship is, Ashley? A Grind Duke. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sending that in, Zach. Very cool. Very, very cool. All right. Uh, once again, if it looks like we're missing something, uh, thank you, Wirecast, for that. That's that's awesome. Sorry. Appreciate it. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and bring in all the way from the UK. And as we do this, I'll thank all, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready for Jimmy J? Thank you very much for the $2 Super Chat, Jimmy J. <laughs> Missing Teen L focused on parents' health right now. Oh, my. Sorry to hear that, man. We'll uh, send our positive vibes your way. Jimmy J. Mm -hmm. All right. So now, here is Ashley with a joke as we bring in Mr. Leg. Uh, let me tell you a joke. Here, did you hear about the new restaurant called Karma? Uh, no. There's no menu. You get what you deserve. Oh, oh. <laughs> Alexa, tell me a joke. What did the corn say to the butter? What did the corn say to the butter? See you on the other side. Ha! Ha! Was that, was that another poop joke? Ha! Hey, look, it's Mr. Leg. How you doing, man? Hiya. All right, now, what time is it in the UK, sir? It's almost half past two. Whew. Okay, I apologize for it. I mean, we, we're running late tonight. So I apologize for that. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. It's great to be here. Uh, just want to shout out to El Smeghead in the chat. He's one of our pilots. Oh, yeah? Okay. Shout out to you, sir. And <clears throat> so you are part of an organization that uh, both Ashley and myself think is a great idea. Tell us a little bit about that, what you're doing. Yeah, it's a, a Facebook group that was started three years ago by a gentleman called uh, Graham Burton. Um, he heard of an old lady in his neighborhood who'd lost her dog. And she, uh, a drone pilot was offering his services for £600 a day. Mm. to look for a dog um so he decided you know that's something that shouldn't happen yeah people should do it because they want to do right. it. right take advantage of people so he t he took uh his drone out and searched for the dog and that was basically how the group came about and, and now to date you have found how many lost pups over 1500 <gasps> that is fantastic Good for you. And that little shyster is out of business. It, the one that was charging six hundred dollars, right? He's gone. Probably. <laughs> good, good. Um, so how how do um, how do, oh look at this little muffin? Look at that little muffin. Show me the muffin. Oh. Did, we, did you see the muffin? Hold on, back it up. Dude, look at the, the, the muffin. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so how does the process work? Um, uh, do, do people look for you, or do you go around to the the signs that people post with lost dog and try to help them? How's it work? When people post on Facebook, uh, they'll post in various groups. Um, and what we do is uh, we get referred to by those groups or people find us themselves. And basically all it takes is a post on Facebook saying where the dog went missing from with a postcode or with a what's three word uh, reference. And then the administrators will then tag the local ground searchers and the local pilots who will go out and basically just look wherever they can for the dog. That's really, really a great thing. Now, uh, certain pets have, uh, what do they call those things? Those tags. I have mine, one on mine, like the little microchips, the microchips. Yeah. But that's, yeah. that's not something that shoots a signal up to the satellite. You got to find them. And then that tells you who the owner is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And, and uh, so, most Oh, go ahead. Most of the time, uh, we're working with the owners, so we get pictures of the, do the dog itself, and uh, we know exactly where it's going back to once we find it. And I imagine there's a lot of times where the dog doesn't want to be rescued. Like, you have to corral them, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, um, 
a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned about having to go over to the island to search for a dog. Um, that dog was missing two weeks in the end. And uh, hmm. we actually had to use traps to, get, uh, ca- to capture it before we could return it to the owner. And right. That took three days. Because, I mean, if a dog's out in the wild for a while, it's going to not trust m- many people and be scared. Poor muffins. That's it depends sad. on the breed. Um, if you've got something like a sheepdog type uh, breed, they generally they prefer to be outside. So they'll make it harder for you. Um, but most pets that go missing, you know, once you track them down, it's easy enough to get hold of them. Yeah. Um, I, I was out on a search today looking for a Jack Russell. Oh. Aww. Um, we didn't find it, but what we've done is we've set up uh, feeding stations in the area to hopefully lure the, keep that dog in that area and hopefully yeah. be spotted. And once it's spotted, we can go out again with a better idea of uh, where we'll find the dog. Right. My and, heart. Uh, <laughs> and you must you must have such... Uh, this is uh, the area that I searched today with the drone. And as you can see, it's all open countryside. Oh, man. Plenty of places for a dog to hide. But that, that would take a team of ground searchers about three days to cover on foot. And do you so, search for uh, other animals as well? Yeah, um, basically we'll we'll enter onto any search that is requested. Um, as we're all volunteers, we all want to help out, you know, so we don't discriminate between... The only thing we do is uh, with missing people, usually the police have got their own... Uh, aerial assets up in the sky already so uh right we tend to only do that by invitation so do you uh you don't search for cats do you because i mean you can just get another one that looks just like the thing right <laughs> <laughs> i'm kidding look at ashley, ashley you better watch how you answer that question <laughs> sir uh, uh, i'm just kidding <laughs> no uh you must you must run into a lot of grateful pet owners and just to be there for that the joy of being reunited uh Here's here's a, a picture of a, the little muffin with muffin mama. Oh, look at look the muffin! <laughs> just looks so happy, like oh, I'm glad you found me, mama. Ah, that, that's a little guy. Yeah, that was the uh, chihuahua that you could see running down the field. Yeah, yeah. Um, that the, some of the little dogs, I, I guess, it's harder to find, right? Yeah, um, with uh, where I am in North Wales. There's a lot of uh, gorse and undergrowth, which is sort of like normally a brownish color. So if you've got a brown dog mm-hmm. laying low in that, it's almost impossible to see. Oh, you know what? I need to. I need to. I need to get my Henry. I'll be right back. Ashley shows yours. Give me a minute. I'll go get okay. my doggy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go get Henry. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, a lot of people in the chat are um, wanting to know like what kind of drones you use, and I was going to ask, do you use cameras um, that just so pi- show pictures, or do you also use like the heat vision? Well, this is usually the equipment that I take with me. I've got um, a Typhoon H, uh, Exicopter, a Mavic 2 Zoom. And I carry everything I'd need when I'm out in the field because you can't always guarantee that you'll be by the car. I love that you included the snacks that you take with you. Yeah, well, one of the things... That, uh, <gasps> Look at Henry! Oh, there him is! Oh, him. little Henry! <laughs> That's my boy. <laughs> little baby Henry butt. Oh, little scooshy boosh. Mm. I can't imagine ever being uh, away from my little co-pilot here oh look at him <laughs> oh henry <laughs> i love that little booger butt he's the, oh look at him he's, oh! <laughs> he, he's not a great um visual observer because he's blind <laughs> but but uh he does drive the hell out of a car when i'm tired on a long trip <laughs> <laughs> i say just you just drive by feel if you feel the rumble strips make a left <laughs> one of the things that I've found is uh, as well as the owners um, members of the public when they see you wearing the high vis vest and they see that you're with search and rescue I've not had a bad encounter at all with any of the public oh good that's pretty crazy that's good yeah man we need we need more and how many people are, are uh, part of this 
there's a th over a thousand drone pilots and over fifteen hundred ground searchers. And uh, what's what's your website if people want to get involved or help out in some way? It's on Facebook. If they just search for drone uh, SAR for Lost Dogs UK. Okay, and there's a link in the description as well. And uh, I want nice. to thank you very much for supporting the channel, William. No problem. You, you are always there with a, a funny comment. And uh, while we have you on, we do this thing every week called Would You Write It? Ooh. Do you want to play? Yeah, go ahead. All right, great. Now this week, <laughs> um, there's a thing called the S1. It's a flying motorcycle. And it's awesome. Are you ready? That's my movie trailer voice. You like it? I do. It's the future of professional flight. It's this week's <laughs> Would You Ride It? So let me know in the chat if you would ride this thing. Check this out. Oh, there it is. Not computer generated, actual flying. It looks like a fish. It does looks like a little orchid, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. I think Henry's trying to watch. <laughs> 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 so we got we got yes, yes, I'm ready to die on this, he says. Hell uh, no. I, yeah. Would you ride it? I, William, would you ride that thing? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay. Ashley, would you ride uh -huh. that? Absolutely not. I barely wanted to ride yours that you took me on that one time. Oh, the motorcycle. Yeah. Well, my motorcycle doesn't fly. Well, I mean, it flies down the road. Yeah. You ask any, any state trooper that. But uh, this thing is still in development. This is designed for an electric flying motorcycle won phase one and two of the Boeing sponsored Go Fly uh, prize. It's now in production with first test flights planned in the Netherlands in July. And here it is landing. So what are people saying? 400 AGL says that's fake video. Well, I mean, yeah, it is like computer generated. And it's pretty slick production, isn't it? It is. It's nice. So it looks like it could go from uh yeah to uh, submersible. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it could do everything. It looks like, right? And William, yeah. you're on board, you would ride it? I would, yes. Okay. And other people in the Probably chat that that said that they would ride it uh, bef be before you give me uh, your final answer, let me play a video of what uh, the thing looks like right now. As I said, it's still in development. So I guess I should ask, would you ride it yet? Because this is what the thing, the S1, the slick thing looks like right now in a recent test. So now. <laughs> I ask you, would you ride it? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Where does your body go? Mm, I think it goes in that little outboard motor thing, maybe. This is just a test of the propulsion system without the ducts and everything. So this is the thing as it stands right now. Would you ride it? <laughs> as long as they kept it strapped down. Yeah, as long as they strap it down. I would ride the crane that's holding it up, but uh, I'm a hard no on that. I think a lot of people might have changed their mind on that. So, uh, William, would you still ride it? Mm, maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Even Henry, he couldn't see it, and he's like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Ray Bob and his antics. Man, thank you so much. He is back in full effect, yo. Aww. Henry looks uh, looks glad. So, long live Henry. Yes, long live Henry. High five. Yeah. So he, he's going to be my co-pilot. And thanks to Ray Bob, we'll be able to get to Washington, D.C. and get to the protest. And I'm going to put you down on the ground. Now, you, you now thanks to Metro Jones. What? Metro Ooh. Drone for his $5. Because he said bone for Henry. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Thank you. Henry needs a bone. Thank you very much for all of your support. And uh, William, thanks for what you do for all the doggies. You're awesome, and, and we'll see you in the chat. Thanks, man. Thank you. And uh, are you going to go to bed now? You're going to stay up. 
No, 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 I've got to take the car into the garage, so I'll probably stay up all night now. Oh, into the, the what? Into, into the, the uh, garage. Into the garage. The shop. The shop. The shop. Y'all call it a shop? No, it's a no, garage. It garage. A garage. Ah, oh it's, yeah. It's, it's a Ga garage. It's a garage here. It's a garage in the UK. And do you know what it is in Canada? Uh. -uh. It's a garage. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is for real. All right, awesome, William. Thanks, man. We'll see you later. Thank you very much. Okay, bye. Bye! Boy, man, that's amazing what he does. That's great. That's that he, so cool. That's so nice. He too. takes his time. More positivity from drones. More good things. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Menace. Hey, Mr. Menace FPV with a $5 super chat. Thanks, man. Hey! I need Mavic 2 Zoom help, and you need FPV help. We might be able to work something out there. Um, but right now, and I have some more videos that I want to share. Right now, while it's already going on, let's go ahead and step into the Raz Chamber. Yes. Let's head on in there. Oh, here we are in the Raz Chamber. Where everybody mm. is just calm. All is good. All of our taxes are done. Amen. And I don't have a 12-hour drive ahead of me tomorrow. <laughs> it's a good place to be. Ah. Ashley, Ashley, your feet are kind of cold. If you don't Let mind. me warm them. No, not there. Let it happen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're friends and all, but anyway. <laughs> ah, the Raz. Mm. Raz. Mm. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, we're gonna have to have a no farting in the Raz sign. Tonight uh, is all about one thing, and it is farting. We were even talking about it before the show went on. If you're a lady and you don't think farts are funny, Ashley disagrees, right? True. Farts are always funny. Always funny. Always funny. Uh, Southern Rail Fanning, two dollar super chat. Thank you so much. Uh, the message was deleted. But um, I'm sure it said it. It was, said to tell the uh, FAA to... Oh, oh, uh, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's okay. We, we get the gist. As long as, as, long as the uh, money wasn't deleted, I'm good with it. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and just trying to be... Just trying to live. All right. Same. Thanks, man. That's, I think that's the first time I've seen you uh, doing a super chat. I appreciate it. Have to flip the bird tomorrow to the FAA. Yes, fa, a cue. cue, and you can get your shirts <laughs> available. Links in the description. All right, uh, let's get to some. Let's get. What are you doing, Henry? What are you doing? Do you know where your bed is? I got a little bed here for him. Go ahead. I don't know if you can see him. Let me put on camera two here. He, he, he likes to. Um, he likes to be near. He's blind. It's over this way. I, oh, little my, Henry. My dog needs a seeing eye dog. Go ahead. <laughs> Get in there, bud. Go ahead, lie down. Lie down, bud. You got it, Henry. Lie down. Go away. Love you. <laughs> Anubis Arts, DJ Grady, man. $20 super chat. It's amazing how many youngsters don't understand what pull my finger means. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, I, I think you should go on a one-man mission to show them. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, will you pull my finger? Thank you. Uh, Michael McCutch, Mc I sure. hope that's right, with a super sticker. Ten dollars super sticker. Thanks, man. Stickers, I like stickers. Yes, I do. Stickers, stickers, I like stickers more than you. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Brad Alston. Five dollars super chat. Hey, Ken, please tell them over and over again. Fa. Q. Q. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we did that. We did that. We did that. I did. I said that the show was going to be short tonight, but I guess I lied. I do want to thank uh, everybody in the FPV community for reaching out and helping me. So much great advice. Um, I really do appreciate it. Very, very nice. And uh, oh, in the chat. Now I'll go back and watch this later. You, you go back and watch this later, don't you, Ashley? Every time. 
in the chat, let me know what country you're from. Just where are you in the world? Okay. Uh, I'm very curious. And in fact, if there's anyone from uh, these parts, well, I would like to kind of take advantage of the local people here. And You think there's anybody in uh, Huntington or West Tennessee watching this? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Maybe. Probably. Okay. Uh, well, if you are, and if you know what Relay for Life is, Mm -hmm. um, it's a charity, and I'm going to be a celebrity waiter. I was a celebrity waiter a couple years ago, and this uh, helps raise money for Baptist Hospital. And so I have mm -hmm. tickets here, and I think they're $25 a piece. Yeah, $25, and it's going to be at the uh, local Baptist church on nice. March 17th. That's St. Patrick's Day. So if you can go, I got tickets. Uh, you can email me here, KenAaronUpload at gmail.com if you want to buy the tickets or if you want to go because uh, it'll be a special treat. The, the great food and you'll be helping out your community. Plus, you get to see me in a suit and I usually don't wear that suit unless I have court. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, hold on. I remember a few years ago you threw in a twist when you were a celebrity waiter um, last time. Yeah, I went all out. I, I wore roller skates and flew my drone. I think what I'm going to do gonna this do year. Again? No, no, I was, I was a laughing stock. <laughs> no, I'm going to, I'm going to bring a bullhorn and, uh, the, the mini this time. That's all. Nice. That's all. It's not a big deal. And, uh, let's see. I think we got, uh, Dan M with a $2 super chat. Hey Ken. Thanks. No, thank you, Dan. And, uh, Alex Philistine with a $10 super chat. Take a stuffed pigeon jerky mascot to flip at the thigh. A Q. <laughs> uh, oh, we got one from Mike, too. From who? Mike Roche? Roche? Oh, Mike Media? Roche. Yeah, yeah, Mike. Hey, Mike. He's, <laughs> he, we, he's, he's the one who lost to Kelly Green at uh, One Second Song last time. Uh, R.I.P. Mike. Well, he $5 super chatted and said, Bone for Ashley. Just kidding. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, uh, oh, 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 Ashley, do you, can you read? I mean, what's? Why, at Ray Bob, good lord, man. What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? Ray Bob, wow, 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 wow. Oh, man, hold on. Damn the copyright strike. Yeah. Ray Bob's antics to give you a relay for life gives those four tickets to whomever you choose. Oh, he bought some tickets. Fantastic, so man. Nice. Thank you for very much for, for doing that. Oh man, wow. that's wonderful. And uh, hey, leg work, man, with a five pounder. All right, thanks for having me on. You're welcome. And uh, now what was I gonna do? Other than uh, keep oogling at all of the wonderful support that we're getting tonight and all, all the gas money, because you know I have a rotary engine and put that thing, I, I, I can put it in six gear and, and actually watch. <laughs> the needle the gas needle go oh it's, lord it's not very fuel efficient and uh henry gets another bone from mike roche thank you <laughs> thanks man now uh what what'd you do we still have to play ashley's nature clip oh yeah and it's gonna be great but first let's go into the woods and give some props because our sponsor tonight master air screw Thank you so Ooh. much, MasterAirScrew.com. And yes, uh, people have been asking me, do they have props for the Phantom? Yes, they do. Nice. And I think this is the this isn't the pro. This is the just the Phantom. They're developing props for the Mini and for the the Phantom series. And if you go to their website and use uh, code TNL. 2YW9. Now that's good until Sunday, I believe. That's 10% okay. off. There's a link in the description. If you click on that link and then get your Master Aeroscrew props. And I've got plenty to give away. Look at these. Look at all these they <gasps> sent me. Thank you, Master wow. Aeroscrew. Yeah, man. They done Master <laughs> Aeroscrewed me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I've got them for the, the Mavic 2 and the Mavic Air. These are the ones that I have and uh, in all sorts of colors. 
So the person that will receive the props tonight is the person who uh, did uh, something creative or innovative, innovative in their video. Okay. And that person is Al Diaz. Congratulations, Al Diaz. You win some props. We're going to give you some nice. props from Master Airscrew, masterairscrew.com. And we appreciate them being a sponsor. I think we're going to have somebody from Master Airscrew on the show next month sometime to talk to them about all the great things they have coming up. Now, yep. uh, Al says, hey, Ken, I just wanted to share my one of my vids. One of my viewers said I should give it a shot. If you ever make it out west, visit the North California coastline. It's an incredible place to visit. Best, Al, from Above It All Aerial Imaging. All right, and here he is with his innovative video with well, about the mini. We are back out here in Saratoga, California. We're gonna get a close proximity shot with the Mavic Mini. I've been out here a few times with the Mavic Pro, uh, Mavic Air, and the Mavic 2 Zoom, all which did well. I figured let's get this little guy out here and see what we can do. Um, yeah, go from there. Let me know what you think. So he, he's gonna get some close proximity uh, shots. <gasps> I'll look out for the branch. The branch! The branch ah! out! The branch! Oh, duck! Oh! Whew! <gasps> look at that! You know, the mini is so small, you can get kind of close to things. Look at that. Wow! Is this giving you some ideas for your mini, Ashley? Maybe! Maybe! It's so pretty! Are you liking your drone, Ashley? Yo, I'm loving it. I'm gonna have to. I learned my lesson. I, I need to get an SD card to put in it because it's saving to my phone, and it's such a high quality camera. My phone was not ready for it. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, I noticed that when you sent me the 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 footage. You can't use. That's just 720. That's poopy. That's poopy. That's that's only meant to record to your phone in case you lose the drone. Oh. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's. I mean, you know, you're, an SD you're learning. Card. You're learning. Look, I'm man. learning though. Yeah. That's so pretty. Wow, wow, wow. Now this stream is not that stream, but this live stream is <laughs> only uh in 1080, but the camera shoots in uh 2.7K. Ashley, do you have a computer to to edit on? Yeah. Okay. My advice is never edit video on your phone. Just don't do it. I mean, unless it's something you're going to send your friend or or your parents or whatever. Uh, yeah, thank so you, I Al. Edit, I edit on my MacBook, but uh, when I flew this past Saturday, I only had my phone to record onto. I didn't buy an SD card yet. Anyways, lesson learned. Well, now let's watch your very first flight with the <laughs> with the Mini. And do you invite people in the chat to give you constructive criticism? Of course. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Ashley is a newbie. She got her first drone. She's only had it a couple weeks now. So here it is, yep. Ashley's very first flight with the DJI Mavic Mini. Oh wait, we missed that. Hold on, it was a good <laughs> shot. Hold on, there, there you go. Thank you. Is that him? Oh, there he goes. All right, now where is this? So this is what we call. So I work for the University of Tennessee at Knoxville. We mm -hmm. are a land grant university, like that little sign says. And we are celebrating 225 years of being a university. And this was the first building that was made on the campus. It's called Ayers Hall. That's me learning how to turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's her, kind of herky-jerky. Yeah, sorry. I was I was figuring it out. But you saw the Sun Sphere, which you filmed when you came into town, or we filmed together. Yep. And then uh, that's just a pic. Or, and then I'm like, uh, 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 uh. I was still really learning. So did you and did you edit at all? Did I edit at all? Mm. No. Okay. Because <laughs> usually people will edit out all of the herky jerky turns and just leave the the beautiful, wonderful cinematic stuff. Oh, see, I just thought everybody was so much better than me. I thought that shot was really cool. I looked over at Blake and I said, "Look at that! You can see downtown." Yeah, um, yeah. It's so it's. Really uh, cool about yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry, what's go really ahead. cool? Go ahead. Oh. So when I had the sun sphere in the background, that is downtown Knoxville. And then as I see, I got really smooth here. Go me. Yeah, you're, you're doing like an orbit thing. 
yeah, I figured out how to kind of do that kind of. So that what we're looking at is just the university. Knoxville's kind of split into two cities. You get you have the downtown city city area and then you have the university itself. It's almost like Knoxville has two different cities. So that's downtown where you and I filmed when you came into town like what, 2 weeks ago? Yeah. And then I backed out of there because I still can't figure out how to film when it's facing me. <laughs> oh, that's that's fine. That's fine. Well, you did a great job. Thanks. Yeah, good. And and it's fun, right? It's so much fun. I'm really excited to um I had an idea to go to what we call it's called Iams Nature Center and I was going to go film the quarry. Uh, because it has really pretty cliffs and stuff. But then when I drove all the way out there, it told me it was a restricted airspace and mm. I would be denied upon request. Right. Um, so you tried to so, get Lance yes. approval. Oh, and because I, because Uncle Ken showed you how to do that. You show, I took your advice and I tried to do that and it didn't matter what I told them. They said no. So <laughs> well, they, they, they know better, I guess. That's good. So I trusted them. Yeah, it, it, where I wanted to film was really close to the airport, and I get it. I understand. So I had to make it work, but it made me so excited to, to find, places that are a lot prettier than, an old building. Yeah, and and once you get used to piloting, um, then you can integrate like some ground footage in it because I always say that drone footage should be like the Jimmies or chocolate on the ice cream, and ice cream being Ooh. the rest of the production. Yeah, that makes sense to me because you know I, mean? I I had a lot of fun with the little drone, the little. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's the fun part, of course. You know, whatever's fun, you do. Yeah. I'm excited. I got a lot more to learn though. Excellent. Well, um, I think it's time to play uh, everybody's favorite game. <laughs> Ashley's uh. nature clip. Song? It's time for Ashley's real gross nature clip. It's oh so gross. It's oh so gross. It's oh so very gross. All right, now is the time to say pick me. Pick me, pick me. Ashley is going to be playing for someone. Oh, man. Now, let me explain how the game works. Tell the, me. The game is very simple. Ashley uh, is a very expressive person. Me? Ve oh, and you cannot hold back how you feel. Virtually impossible. So whenever there's something that's extreme or disgusting, um, you will make a face. So the object of this game is for Ashley to watch this clip from nature. It's just nature, natural, without making any kind of facial expression at all. If she can do that, then you win. Now, of course, there's a consolation prize. Consolation prize is a set of eyeballs for your drone. Eyeball. Yeah, and I have them right there in that drawer. So, who will you be playing for tonight? Tonight, I am playing for Brad Austin. All right, very good. You might want to write that name down. Yeah, I'm going to type it in, screenshot it, got it. Got it, okay. So, uh, once again, it's pretty impossible for Ashley to not make a face at these nature clips. And with that said, if Ashley watches this clip without making a face, tonight's prize is my car! That's right! <laughs> I'll be giving away a 2011 Mazda RX-8. That's right. Wow. That's how much confidence I have that Ashley will make a face. <laughs> My car, up for grabs tonight. The Mazda yeah. six-speed Bose stereo system. Xenon headlights. Zoom, zoom, baby. Yeah. So, but uh, when she does make a face, uh, the consolation prize is, is pretty cool too. So I'm, once I'm really nervous because you text me in the middle of the day today and you're like, <laughs> have your barf bag ready. Ooh. And I've been scared ever since. Yeah. All right. So uh, <laughs> feel free to give your opinion in, in the chat. Now, this is perfectly natural. By the way, if you want to send in a clip for Ashley's nature clip, you can do that here. Ken Heron upload at gmail.com. 
Uh, you, you can also send me your videos. If you want to have your video on the show, Ken Aaron upload at gmail.com. Are you ready, Ashley? I'm nervous. The only thing is you cannot look away. You can't close your eyes. We will put toothpicks in your eyeballs to make sure that you're staring. You ready? I'm so ready. Ashley's nature clip. Enjoy. What is it's not poop. Mm. It's some uh, kind of intestinal blockage. And it looks like it's a, quite a relief to the elephant. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, there might be something else in there, Ashley. She went in to see, to, you know, just to make sure. Oh, you're hot. You're hot. We're just looking around. What's in there? Did I drop my watch in there? So there you go, Ashley, your thoughts. I, that is the closest I have ever come <laughs> on the show, on the show we did together uh -huh. to actually vomiting. I felt it. I felt it up here. That cough was not fake. <laughs> I'm very scared that I was going to vomit. Yeah. Well, um, one thing I'll point out was that that woman did that without gloves. Now. How could we step this up a notch? How could no, it get worse? I don't, I don't, I feel like you already have an answer for that. And I'm yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, oh, if we put it back where you found it. <laughs> is it gonna walk in on its own? I think it will. Why is she doing it barehanded? Why is it so long? <laughs> oh, we're putting it back. It's just gonna crawl in there. <laughs> You can't, you can't borrow something and then and then not put it back where you found it. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ashley, <laughs> what? Are you okay? Go to your happy place. Go to your happy. <laughs> I don't have a happy place after this. <laughs> oh, Ashley, that is so hilarious. So, uh, what's the name of the person who won uh, a sticker? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Eyeball stickers for, for your drone. His name is Brad Austin. Congratulations, Brad Austin. And again, if you want to send in a clip for it, doesn't always have to be poo. It, just just something natural, something from <laughs> from the world of nature. Uh, Ken Heron upload at gmail Hi. <laughs> is this oh. your favorite part of the show? Because it's my favorite what? part of the show. I, it's a part of the show that I am a part of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Oz by Drone. Hey, man, thank you. <laughs> Why did you play that today? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Greg uh, just uh, received a colonoscopy today, as did that elephant. <laughs> oh, Thanks, Stig man. Stigray said, imagine the smell. <laughs> oh, the smell is so bad. Um, all right, so I got a couple couple more. And, and the viewer video of, of the week today is just, just fantastic. It was filmed in... Well, I don't want to give it away. I don't want to give it away. But it would, don't, don't spoil it. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I want to tell a little story about how, and some of you Eagle Eye viewers may have noticed, that I have a Skydio 2. <gasps> Anybody notice that? Look at this little guy. Wow. It's a Skydio 2. Uh, Ashley, do you know about the Skydio 2? Y'all talked about it a couple uh, shows ago. Yeah. I can't remember why. Yeah, well, it has nine cameras on it. These are like cameras no slash way. sensors. Yeah. And so uh, you can fly this and uh, it, it will avoid obstacles for you, like autonomously. And the story behind this is kind of interesting. I'm not going to mention the guy's name, but I, I was contacted from someone in New Zealand. And they were asking me um, about if I could help them get the drone to them, because apparently this person couldn't get this directly mailed to them from the United States. This is... Uh, an American drone and I said I said well if you let me play with it for a little bit send it to me and I'll send it on to you so that's what he did and he trusted that's me so nice. yeah yeah and and so uh, I'm not gonna wreck it of course but uh, I had to register it to fly in the United States airspace 
So, um, and he got everything. He got everything. Let me go ahead and make my uh, picture a little bit bigger here to show you. Uh, the controller you might recognize is kind of like a parrot controller. Um, you know, there you go. It's got the little dipty doos here with the dipty doos. And then, oh, dipty doos. Yeah, yeah. Well, but the really cool thing is the beacon. This is a thing that goes in your pocket or whatever. And when this is in your pocket, the drone will then follow you wherever you go. No way. Yeah, you just send it up and then this thing will, like you can drive your uh, motorcycle through the woods and this will go around trees and, unless you're Billy Kyle. If you're Billy Kyle, then it goes in the water. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Billy. <laughs> but, uh, so I'm gonna try that out. Hopefully it won't go in the water because I don't want to buy it, <laughs> but I will do a review on it. Now, uh, one of the other things that's really cool about this is it has magnetic batteries. Check this out. This is how the battery goes on. Just like that. Wow. Free a magnet. And it's, <clears throat> it is tough to get on and off. And uh, it came with two batteries. And I was going to buy a third and send it to dude, you know, just to thank him. Um, but I got this near my wallet and it erased my credit card. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. It doesn't do that. It doesn't do that. But uh, one thing it does do, it'll, it'll, They'll, they'll kind of repel each other. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, look for a video coming up on my channel about that. And I thank our friendly New Zealander for uh, letting me experience the Scotio 2. Very anxious. Uh, the weekend after I returned from D.C., me and Kelly and Whitney Westerfield, Senator West Westerfield, we're going to put this through its paces. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be fun. It will be fun. It's always fun to check out a new drone. Uh, okay, so, Ashley? Yes. Have you ever, have you ever flown in a little teeny tiny plane? Yeah, I've, I've flown in a crop duster before. You have? What's it like? Because I was invited to, to, to be in a crop duster. What's 10 out of 10, do it. Really? What's it like? Uh, it makes you want to throw up a little bit because yeah. if you're with the right person, when they go down to crop dust the field, you'll go underneath the power lines and stuff. Really? And then you'll go up real fast and you're kind of like, oh. Well, I, you know, I do have experience crop dusting. <laughs> I used to do it to my living girlfriend. She didn't appreciate it. But uh, so, yeah, uh, so this is from uh, Matt Harris from Drone Strike LLC. And this uh, crop duster is in Ohio. I don't know exactly when it'll happen, but I'm looking forward to checking it out. Last time I flew in a little teeny tiny uh, plane was the traffic plane in Birmingham, Alabama, back in 1998. And I do have video of me in there. No way. Not right now, because I have to find it. But it's, uh, it's all like grainy 640 by 480, you know. I look fantastic, but the video looks like hell. Isn't that the way it is? <laughs> right? It seems like the, the older and uglier I get, the better the video is. You know, why can we have 4K back when I was gorgeous? Why? <laughs> yeah. You are so gorgeous. No, Ken. you Look stop. You stop it. Anyway, yeah, many oh, years from now, when you're when you're gray and I'm long dead, you'll be like, you know, Ken was kind of. <laughs> so uh, here's 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 the plane that he's talking about. Is that kind of the plane that you flew in? Yeah. Man, it just looks so fun. Do it. I wonder if he'll do a flip do with me in it. Could he do a flip do uh, I didn't think they could, but I don't know a lot about planes. Maybe. I don't know. I, I really like it when they do that gravity thing, when they push the stick forward and you're floating. And you're like... Re yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay. I still have this in my pocket. <laughs> uh, That's okay. Okay, so someone else got a new Mini, not just you, and his name is uh, Evan Beekman, which is just a cool name. Evan Beekman. Hey, Ken, I got a Mavic Mini for my first camera drone. Super excited to use it, so I shot this the first day. I could get out to fly without my fingers falling off, so apparently it's cold where he is. And uh, let's compare his first video with uh, <laughs> Ashley's first mini video. <laughs> No, no, it's all right. It's all right. 
It's all about the editing, Ashley. You'll get better at it all. Well, I did none of it. Nah, you just, you'll be fine. Evan Beekman. Wow. So, yeah. It does look cold there, doesn't it? Yeah, the snow really, really does it. It's a good indicator of the, the temperature. I went to a, um, Stephen F. Austin State University in Texas, and we had a dormitory that was shaped like that that was a girl's dorm. We called it the garbage can. <laughs> and uh, we called them the garbage girls. They hated it. <laughs> they hated it. Oh, oh, you're dating a garbage girl? <laughs> okay. Anyway, thank you very much for that. Mr. Beekman. Fantastic. Uh, what else? All right. So all I have left is the viewer video of the week. What else? We did the Raz. We did, we did that. With, am I missing anything? What else did I, what else did I miss? Farewell Filters is coming up, right? Right, right, right. Oh, that's right. Because the person that uh, gets a viewer video of the week will get filters from Freewell. And uh, they're a China-based company. So thanks to the coronavirus, you're going to have to wait a little bit to receive it. Oh. They, they sent me a message saying, well, things are kind of slow, but they're going to catch up. So, well, that's good. Yeah. Uh, oh, 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 okay, okay. I forgot to play this last week. This is awesome. So many people sent me this video. I'll probably play it twice. But okay. th th so simple and so amazing. And uh, by now you've already seen it, but I'll share it because I know Ashley hasn't seen it. Um, watch this. There, it explains itself. So if you don't have a ladder and you can't reach... Stop. Let's put it right in there. And then what do you do yet? Screw it in. <laughs> I'm so done. <laughs> Wasn't that fantastic? That's hilarious. What a great idea. That was great, man. Uh, we did that. We just, you know, yeah, I don't want to play that one. We did that one. Oh, 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 oh. Huh. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, I have to get up very early in the morning, so we're about to shut the show down. Ashley, is there anything else that you would like to share? The floor is yours. Do we miss any Super Chats? Uh, not that I could see. I don't think so. The only thing I have to say is if you have any constructive criticism for me as I continue to learn to fly and learn the rules, let me know. And if people want to follow you on Instagram. There it is. Instagram is where you can catch up with me. It's awkward, Ashley. But you got to spell Ashley the long way. A-S-H-L-E-I-G-H. -E yeah. <laughs> if you get confused, I'm in the chat. You can just follow my channel, follow my Instagram. That's where I talk to everybody. Fatty FPV was in my, uh, was in my DMs earlier. Leg work messages me a lot too. We t I talk to people on there. Oh, that's great. And it's all yeah. about making friends, isn't it? All right. They were actually some of the first people to see one of the pictures from my first solo fly. You, your your Instagram is chock full of some random goodness. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I follow you as well and sometimes sometimes you just get on there like, "Girl, I feel so empowered today. It's going to be a good day." <laughs> You give yourself like a little video pep talk. Today's going to be the best Tuesday ever or whatever. Yes. Yes, of course. Sometimes you need that little boost. And I always go, if I can do it, you can do it. Love you. Bye. Oh, there you go. Uh, uh, Beaker Productions with a $2 super chat. Thanks, man. That tall building is the beer can here. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And uh -huh. you call them the, the beer babes. Is that what you call them? Ooh, beer babe. Nice. There you go. That's a t-shirt. All right. <laughs> Uh, the viewer video of the week is from Tommy from the and his cha his channel name is Oh my God. <laughs> There's a link in the description. His channel name is Oh my God, all one word. Oh my God, and. Uh, I love that. 
And uh, so he says, Ken, I was invited to a Romanian <coughs> salt mine to try to fly FPV and to promote the DCL, the game. Check out the incredible footage we got. Tommy from, oh my God. So this is fantastic. Yes, I saw what Ray Bob did. We'll talk about that in a minute. And uh, it is the viewer video of the week. Enjoy. It's fantastic. Woo. All right. After 20 hours of traveling, fellas, we made it. We made it to Romania. And it's cold as Yeah, guys. Y'all don't know. <laughs> He's, nice the man, he's the man responsible for why I'm here, so thank you very exactly. much. Exactly, thank you to you for accepting us. <laughs> yeah, man. Our request. We yeah, wait man. To see you here. Dude, this is, place is amazing. Go wherever you want, guys. We can go wherever well, we, we can want. We fly wherever we wherever want. Wherever you All want. right. So the first place they wanted to go was in the elevator. They're flying the FPV drone in the elevator. <laughs> this is great. This is a salt mine that was decked out uh, specifically for FPV flyers and to promote DCL the game and what you're about to see as soon as he gets out and starts flying again is the extent of the awesomeness sit back and enjoy this from Tommy oh my god Whoop. Yes, that's a Ferris wheel underground. Stop. So all these twirls that I see, that, that's not editing, that's... No, 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 they're actually doing it. The, this is camera movement. There's no gimbal on FPV drone. This is pure, unadulterated talent. This is called FPV Freestyle. The course is set up for racing, but we're just getting a freestyle type tour of it right now. This is beautiful. I want to rave here. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be a great place for a rave, wouldn't it? I mean, and you can fly this exact course in the video game. It, it was, no this, way. it was, it's a real life version of the DCL the game. Link in the description if you want to check it out. How about that? Yo, that was wicked. Wasn't it? Thank that you very wicked. much to uh, Tommy from Oh My God channel. Link in the description. That's a Romanian salt mine FPV freestyle. Mm. One day, nice. one day I will be uh, uh, good enough one day to do this. One of the things I want to do first uh, is thank our very good friend, Ray Bob. <laughs> Ray Bob, wow, wow, wow. Ray Bob's antics, $125 super chat. Before y'all get gone, one last parting shot, Ken, my brother. Um, uh, check out wow. Ray Bob's channel, please. I, I, we were trying to break, uh, uh, I think, a uh, hundred. How many subscribers does he have? Let me know in the chat. He has but. 247. Oh, okay. Maybe we can get him 300 tonight. He's just a great supporter of the channel. There's, in fact, I created an entire Patreon tier. <laughs> just for the Ray Bobs, and he's the only one in there so far. Lots of other Stop. people supporting on uh, on the Patreon, and I very much appreciate it. Um, who else? Uh, really, FPV with a three dollar <laughs> super chat. Love your show. Thanks, man. It's great to see all these FPV people in here. And uh, that is cool. Who else? Who else? We got uh, oh Tennessee Tian Rocky, Rac Rocky Raccoon with a five dollar super chat. Uh, have a safe trip to DC. Represent. I shall, and uh, I appreciate the gas money, and <laughs> and and junk food money. I allow myself to have 
junk food. Whenever my my thing now, I only get about two hundred and fifty miles per tank full. Seriously, it's it's bad, but good. You know what I mean? Like I don't care because no, the car is so awesome. But every time I fill up the tank, I'm like, oh, I'll get some ding dongs, maybe some holes, kick back, listen to some music or a podcast, and I'm just eating junk. I'm eating like, you know, the the gum that turns into candy and the and the the, the room temperature meat that they have. And uh, yeah. Henry's looking at me, going, oh, what are you doing? But uh, cool, awesome. Now I want to pl play one more thing. Speaking of FPV, and I had this guy. Uh, give me permission to share this on the show back when this video only had like 30,000 views. And I know for a fact that the music in this will give me a, not a, a strike, but a copyright notice. So, but mm. I, I don't monetize this anyway. You may have noticed I don't monetize the stream, but I wanted to share this because this is one of the motivators for me um, to really get going with with FPV. This name this guy is Russian. His name is Alexander Shvevdov. And this is him, FPV building diving the tallest skyscraper in Russia. I'm gonna play just the best part of this. Check this out. This is gonna blow your mind, Ashley. Look at that thing. What? The yellow part is just so that the cranes can be attached. It's over 1,500 feet high. Every time I watch this, I get chills. Just beautiful. And he flies up to these workmen. <laughs> Look at them, they're like, hey, what are you doing up here? <laughs> Hang on to your hats, Ashley. You ready for this? One of the best FPV edits in flights in history, in my opinion. Your thoughts? <laughs> There's a, a link to the full video in the description if you want to check it out while Ashley's mind is is blown. That that I want to do that. Now there's a building in Atlanta called the Bank of America building. It's uh over a thousand feet high. And uh I've been talking to some FPV friends and we're gonna go try to maybe do that. I think. <gasps> Yo, can and that maybe, be sick? We got it. We got it. I mean, got you know, got to do it legally. But right, yeah, it would course. be sick. I just, I just, I, I got the FPV bug. Anyway, um, uh, CJ Meeks aerial for, uh, videography, ten hour super chat, man. Thank you so much. And uh, David Cassidy back again with a twenty dollars super chat. Much appreciated. What's the, <laughs> what's the longest selfie stick allowed in DC? You know, I actually thought of, about that. You know, putting a camera on a, a huge stick. You know those um, measuring sticks that gas stations use to s see the level of... Yeah, 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 yeah. They're like 30, 40 feet long. Just put a 360 camera on that and go, we're flying! What are you going to do, FAA? <laughs> Here's how I feel about that. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and uh, Stephen Myers. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks for all the videos, Ken. Very much appreciated. Um, yeah, I'm going to be getting my car worked on again. I'm going to get an exhaust system on it, you know, because it's, it's loud now, but I want it to be, I want it to have a note anyway. You want it to hit a certain register. Yeah, and there's, there's a shop called the RPM in Hagerstown, Maryland. It's an hour away from D.C., so it's kind of a double. I mean, I'm going to the protest. But I'm also getting my car worked on. Yeah, you gotta yeah, maximize. I'm worried about you in that car. I'm what? worried about you. Why? Why? You just, you just, you're just doing too much. I love the car so much. 
You're doing too much. I love the car more than any person. I love my car more than my dog. <gasps> I'm kidding. Take it back. I'm kidding, buddy. Come here, Henry. Henry. Take it back. Come here, right bud. Now. He's so blind. Come here. I'm over here, buddy. He's also going Henry a little. deserves more than that. He's also going a little deaf. Oh, look at him. Isn't it the cutest? Anyway, this show's going on way too long. Uh, thank you very much for supporting the channel. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to try to film as much stuff, get as much content as I can between now and when I return on Wednesday. And uh, should I do some impromptu live streaming with my phone? What do you think? Let me know in the chat. I think so. I think so. For people like me who can't be there, I'd tune in. Yeah, I think I will. I, I always feel like I'm jipping people because, you know, it's kind of like I can't edit it, make it all fancy. But uh, the grumpy vlogger, man, thanks, man. <laughs> for, for bail money. Yeah, something's going to happen. No. Hey, sorry, cop. I'm allergic to pepper spray. <laughs> anyway. Kelly's going to call me and say, I was Ken's one call from jail, Ashley. We got to go. <laughs> right, to right. DC and go get him. <laughs> would you? Would you bail me out? Yeah, could you imagine what kind of video that would be? It'd be Ooh, great. Ooh, that'd be great. <laughs> we be great hope you enjoyed the show half as much as you would have if it had been twice as good <laughs> thanks everybody for support the channel patreon super chats thank you again to old gravy leg fpv for being on i will see you out in dc this saturday uh william leg for drone search and rescue for lost dogs uk and oh, legs on the show today no hold on a second hold on a second hold on a second hold on a second we can't roll credits yet. Hi. Because didn't I say there was a special mystery guest? We've had someone waiting this whole time? Nah. -huh. No way. Yeah. So Ooh. now as I get the mystery guest. I am nervous. And I am it, so scared. And it depends on this person's uh, connectivity, where they happen to be. But Ashley, tell us a joke. You thought I uh, forgot. This isn't a joke, but I am so scared. You know, now that the shoe is on the other foot, Kelly, I am so sorry that he does this to you so often <laughs> because I am so nervous right now. About the mystery guest? Yeah, I don't know why I'm so scared. Oh, well. Because who would be waiting this long? Who? I don't know anybody who would wait this long. Who would it be, ladies and gentlemen? Hopefully this person will answer. If they don't, it would be very anticlimactic, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> don't be, don't be scared. So don't scared. be scared. Is that elephant's butthole again? I swear <laughs> to God. <laughs> it's worse if you say it. <laughs> it's worse if you say it out yeah, loud. <clears throat> um, well, I don't know if this person is going to be on. <gasps> Hello? Mystery guest? Mystery guest? Hello? Reveal yourself. Hold on. We'll give it another shot. I'm sorry. This is anticlimactic at the end. I... Let's see. Are you going to tell me who it, who it was if I, they it, don't answer? If they don't answer, I will, yeah. Okay. Take a guess in the, in the chat. All right. <laughs> what do you call a bear with no ears? What? B. Mm. Mm. Oh, I think we have them, ladies and gentlemen. It's the mystery guest, and it is, in fact, if we can see a picture. Do we have a picture? We don't see you, hello. mystery guest. Hello, hello, mystery oh, guest. Wait. Hit the hit the camera button so we can see I you. Don't... Hit the camera button, mystery guest. He's. I'm trying. Oh, it sounds like Dana Williams, doesn't it? No, you better stop! It's Dana Williams! Hey, Dana! <laughs> hey, man! What's happening? Welcome to the show, man! Running a little late tonight, aren't you? Yeah, a little bit late. Um, I was, you know, calling you. Uh, now, you're on. Are, where are you? I don't know. Somewhere other side of Memphis, I guess. Are you in the, <laughs> are you, are you in the bus? 
Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is uh, Dana's oh, yeah. tour bus. For those who don't know who Dana Williams is, uh, Dana Williams was uh, the original host on here. Dana uh, is also the bass player for a country band called Diamond Rio. It's me, it's me, it's Ernest T. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, where, where are you headed? We all miss you. So many people email me and say, where's Dana been? Well, I am heading to uh, Waco, Texas tonight. All right. We play over, we play over there tomorrow. Ooh. All right. And then, uh, then we're going to Bay City, Texas after that. Very cool. And how long have you been on the bus so far today? <laughs> well, let's see. We left about 4 o'clock. Yeah. How Sorry many... if the video isn't very good. I don't know how the service is. Oh, that's all right. It's pretty good, actually. Um, so tell me, how many hours of your life have been spent on that bus? Dude, <laughs> how can you measure that? Hey, man, wait a minute. Before we get into that, I see a, I see a pretty nice-looking female over here. Oh, well, that, yeah. <laughs> Look at all that hair. Yeah. Have, 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 you, met, uh, have you met Ashley? Uh, no. Have I met Ashley? Yeah, this have you before, Ashley? No. That's Ashley. I, don't think no. I, I think Ashley is geeking out because right now she she may not realize it, but she is talking to someone who has met and is friends with Reba McIntyre. Oh, oh! Don't <laughs> tell me she likes Reba. Oh, no. Call Reeb Reeb for short. Yes, go on, <laughs> go on, Reeb. Ashley. Ashley, are you okay? <laughs> Listen, listen, I'm a huge fan of Reba, but the thing is, I also kind of pooped a little because I'm a huge fan of Diamond Rio, so, <laughs> so I have a lot happening in just my a, body. Just a little bit came out. <laughs> just a little <laughs> You know, for, for people in other countries who uh, may not have heard of Diamond Rio, uh, do do a little Googling, and, and yeah. you'll see. Um, uh, yeah, just, just Google, Google Sim. Yeah, and, it'll all come clear to you. Yeah, and uh, uh, Dana is uh, the bass player and uh, singer, uh, part one of the singers for Diamond Rio, uh, a, a Grammy award-winning band, and a member of the Grand Old Opry. And Henry is here too. Yeah, Henry. Yeah, Henry wanted to see you, Dana, but he never will. Man, <laughs> Ken, Ken, chicks, Henry. Golly. Yeah, we're just overloading with the coolness tonight, aren't we? Hey, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a yeah. minute. What you got? Oh. Oh, see, oh, now see. Now she's getting to my heart right there. <laughs> yeah, Dana has several cats in his house, don't, don't you? Dan knows I love cats, man. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> when when are you going to be uh, able to, to, to play with me again and make some drone videos? Uh, you know, I, I'm always up for that, man. Maybe... Uh, I don't know what we're doing next week, but for sure in in, in uh, the first two weeks of March, we can get something in. Okay. And for sure in April. All right. Very good. And uh, what... Uh, you know, April, I think it's April when I, uh, or is it May, that we come and play in Huntington. Oh, that's right. My, my hometown, right down the street there at the Dixie, you'll be playing. No way. I'm going to throw a rock and hit his house. Do you, Ashley, do you want to come hang out and go to the show with me? Absolutely. Oh, I think <laughs> I might. I think I might know a guy that can get us some tickets. Just think how much longer her hair will be by then. Yeah, it's pretty long. <laughs> Wait, is this in April? Uh, I don't know if it's April or May, one or the other. Yeah, can you make it, My Ashley? Birthday's in April. Oh, what a great birthday present that would be. Oh, birthday girl in April. Huh? Yeah. Awesome. Well, people are, are, are flipping out in the in the chat. They're all saying hello, and they, they miss you. Well, hello to everybody, man. Sorry I haven't been with you guys. I know you. I know uh, things have been wonderful, and it's obviously gotten a whole lot uh, a whole lot prettier around there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Tim. Your hairy legged old boys. <laughs> Tim Jackson wants to know if uh, Diamond Rio is going to be coming to Australia. What, what, do you have any international dates? Oh, Jim, how we'd love to come to Australia. I've had, I got a couple of buddies in Australia that uh, have asked me that. 
Oh, how I wish we would. We, we, for some reason or another, the phone hasn't rang for us to come there yet. And and the, the, the bus uh, has a problem uh, getting there, doesn't it? It's kind of hard because, uh, you know, we just don't have that big of an intake pipe. Right. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, well, Dana, thank you very much for taking a moment to to talk with us tonight. And absolutely, man. And uh, I'm, you guys are running way late. Dude. Yeah, we're running way late. I'm going to get about two hours of sleep before I hit the road and head to DC. But um, oh, are you? So you're leaving tomorrow then, or in the morning? Yeah, as soon as I get up, I'm leaving. Yeah, so but, and when is it? Uh, Saturday. Uh, Friday and Saturday. All right. I yep. want you to protest for all of us, man. I will. I'll represent, my protest, friend. Protest, protest. I have no idea that protesting does any good, but it sure does sound cool. That yeah, <laughs> and it feels good to do it. Yes, it feels good. and uh, I'll get to know, meet a lot of great people out there. You can go out and film people and, and film the mad ones because that's the ones we want to see and, and hear. Heck yeah, man. All right. The ones that are bad, the nice guys. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Well, <laughs> well, we'll 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 get together next week sometime, and uh, everybody All look right, look for some uh, Dana and Ken uh, content on the channel again soon. Just holler at me, man. Just uh, holler. At me. All right. Thanks, Dana. All right, pal. See you. All Bye. right. See you, man. Bye. All right. Well, that was fantastic. Dana's awesome. Glad to have him back on the show again. Wow. What are your thoughts there, Ashley? I met Dana Williams. I thought you, I thought you met him before. No, I've never, I've, no, never. Oh, you were starstruck, weren't you? I've watched your videos, but like, he's alive and I'm alive and we were alive in the <laughs> same realm. All right. I think Ashley's a little tired. We hope you enjoyed the show <laughs> half as much as you would have if it had been twice as good. Once again, thanks to all of our guests. Matt Williamson, oh, grave leg. Thanks to everybody for the support in the chat and the Patreon. And uh, be thinking about me when I'm driving. Thank you very much, uh, William Leg, for doing what you do for the UK doggies. You know, uh, dogs in, in Britain bark with a British accent. It's very proper. Yeah. And <laughs> thanks to um, Dana Williams for gracing us with his presence again. Thank you, Ashley. And uh, with that, we're going to wrap it up. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Until next time, buh. And bye. And fa. <laughs> Cute. Cute. <laughs> <laughs>